Hello, hey, Danielira. Hello, Kakira. How are you? How are you, Danielira? I'm good, good. I'm good. Oh, that's three goods. That's yeah. uh, excellent uh, I'm in good my book. And excited. Why are you excited, uh, Danielita? I mean, you know, things are always good here. I have to be grateful for that. But yes. uh, why are you particularly excited today? Do you want to try and guess? Because uh, you know it. Um, no, but I, I, I mean, I can act like uh, as, as if I don't know. I can play the audience role and be like, I don't know what's going on. Like, why are you excited? So um, something exciting happened today. Mm, I want to see if mm. uh, maybe someone tries and guess. Mm. They know us. Maybe they know uh, what well, there's that a lot thing of, is. Oh, there's a lot of things, I feel. Oh, there's a, yeah. Oh, but look, Drew said you got a dog. So, Drew. Uh, so, no. So, no. First, no. But uh, we've settled in a dog. So, I mean, we don't have it yet because it's very little. But it is a reality. It is a, a real dog. It is a real dog now. In yeah. the same way you were um, fiction. Until you appeared on camera. Exactly, exactly. Um, I was created because of the live streams. You were Not willed, before. Well, you were willed into existence because of uh, YouTube. Yes. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, now it's not the idea of Chile, mm. but there's an actual puppy. Mm. So, yes. Yes, so, I'm super excited. So, we're still going to uh, get Chile here with us. On December. Yeah, so it's, so it's, it's still, a ways away. Yes. It's a ways away. So hoping that the uh, puppy stays healthy. Yes. It's always uh, always a concern. But So hopefully. it's a she. Oh, it's a she. She is it's a, chili. Oh, a shealy? Ah, shealy. That's nah, terrible. Oh, the art is chili. Oh. I like that, yeah. Egon shealy. Shealy, yeah, yeah. Where were you going with shealy? Well, it's a she. Oh, she. I thought with, with that you were talking about Egon Chili. No, it's a Chili. No. Yeah, it's terrible. Chili, but it's mm -hmm. Chili, but it's Chili. Okay. Chili. It's a terrible. It's so. a. So no, we're hoping. Uh, yes, I'm super excited. I was able to uh, see the puppy mm. uh, by video call. Yeah. Uh, she is tiny. <laughs> I don't know. I'm. I just. I get a little nervous. Uh, when I think about it, like when I think that it's more close to being a reality. Yeah. So, yes, but I am super excited. Very I know excited that you're for excited you. Too. Yeah. And hopefully everything works out. Yes. So, you, you know, me, uh, I'm always grounded. So this is baby steps. First step. Uh, oh, but it's this a is wonderful not a, step. Yeah. This is not a small step for me because you know how indecisive I am. Oh, I know. And I was not having good sleep. <laughs> oh. Because I'm so indecisive. Indecisive. Yeah. So something happened, and I'm going to tell it right here. Oh, my God. Because you didn't know about this. But no. I knew that I wanted this puppy. Uh, like, I saw that puppy, and I was like, oh, I love it. I, I just, I love it. And yesterday, yeah. you and I, we yeah. had a conversation. Yeah. And you told me, you know, try to, like, settle for the puppy you want. And you told me, like, it doesn't matter if it's in December or if it takes more time. Yeah. Or if it's uh, not here in our city or in a different city. Just think about the, the puppy you want. And it was like you were reading my mind because in my head I was like, no, I want that puppy. But I knew that it was more complicated to get that puppy mm -hmm. than others. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? Just going to do it. Just going to do it. Well, I'm very, very happy for you. Um, I'm very happy too. Yeah. So hopefully from... Well, you know what's the good thing? That from here to there... We're going to have to worry so much about other stuff. Yeah, you know? the time's going to fly. Yeah, the, it's good not to... I mean, it's good to, like, check in from time to time. It's like, hey, how's the dog? And, and um, 
you know, and then if they say, hey, it's great, like the vet saw the dog today and, mm -hmm. you know, everything's in order or everything seems to be good and, you know, yeah, no, no issues health wise. Um, that's good. But I think if there was nothing from here to there that we would have to do, like it would occupy your mind quite a oh, lot. Oh, yes. So I'm going to do you a favor and I'm just going to bombard you with stuff about the book, you know, from here till December. Yeah. No, so and, you don't and, think about it. And I know myself and I know that it's going to be cool that maybe I'm going to be thinking like I'm going to know that I have to have my mind super occupied in other things. Yeah. So I know that I'm going to be carving more. Yeah. Which is good because I could work and yes. not think about the puppy or work while I listen to videos about puppies. Oh, my God. Which is what You're I've like been doing. You're like all in here. Which is what I've been doing. Yeah. If I'm being honest. No, you know me. I, I'm a very... Um, Obsessed. Well, I wouldn't no, use that. I would no, say I would say well, well researched person. Yeah, I like to know my facts. <laughs> yeah. And and more if it's a huge decision like this one. And maybe for people it's like, is it a big decision? I have 10 dogs. So maybe it's not such no, a huge decision for them, but it's my first you, it's, puppy. It is true yeah. for you. Yeah. So I just want to be prepared. Yeah. And I've been searching and researching a lot. Yeah. About um, puppies, lots of puppies. And I know that that's going to be a way of keeping, like keeping my head excited, but also letting time pass. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. That's... So I'm very excited. And I, um, uh, I would love to, uh, share the, I just wanted to share the notice with you guys. The notice? The um the news with yeah, you guys. Yeah, better. Notices yeah. are no, usually no, not easy. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. La noticia. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm very excited. I know that Nicolas is excited too. I'm 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 very excited, but more importantly, I'm very excited for you. So, we are yeah, Drew Thompson was saying the OPO family is expanding. Yes. For a bit. For I, I was going to say not, it's not a huge expansion because it's a tiny dog. But yes, I'm so excited. No, I'm very happy and you have all my good energy so that um, everything, you know, from here to there, everything, you know, is, is perfect. Yes. Well, but, not, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just a healthy dog, yeah. honestly. By the way, something funny happened. What's that? Because I told you, I mean, you know that. Because I told you, like, you know, I'm set. I want this dog. I'm going to mm -hmm. contact the person that I'm, I've been talking with. And I just wrote them like, hey, how are you? And they were like, hey, how old is your kid? And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't have a kid. <laughs> oh, do, do you have news? Do you want to tell me something? No, no, no. And they were like, oh, Was this oh, just oh, a oh. ploy to tell me that you have a kid? No. What and is going on in here? And they were like, no, I'm sorry. And I haven't told them that I was in so uh, that I was interested. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just, I don't have the words. But I haven't told them that I won wanted the female. Because they have two males and a female. And she told me, oh, no, I'm sorry. I was typing this other person from Bogota that is, in that is interested in the female dog. Mm. So I was asking because they told me they had a little kid and I was like, no, I'm interested in it, please. <laughs> so we just did a video call. Yeah. Could you imagine if that was like a, a thing they do just to get you to like, th that would be amazing. Oh, that salesman. would be amazing. But you know what's the like, weird oh, I'm thing? I'm sorry. Um, yeah. How, how old is, so how old is your kid? And you're like, what? What are you talking about? I mean, it's a, it's a win-win if you think yeah, about it. I'm, I'm always cynical. So I'm no, always yeah, thinking. Yeah. But you know what's like, the weird you know, thing that i that? haven't told them that i was ex that i wh why am i saying excited that i was interested in the female dog right because i started asking for a male puppy right so they would have no idea that i was really interested in the female puppy but you probably i'm guessing how you're speaking right now i'm pretty sure that at some point you were like no no no, i'm actually talking about the 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 little, uh, you know, the little female. No, you know, I I didn't. 
But it, uh, but what, what would change regarding how they told you, how they said? Oh, because they told me, oh, no, this person's in, interested in the female puppy. So I was typing that person. And they knew that I contacted them because I wanted a male puppy. So it wouldn't be like trying to, like, fish me into getting the puppy. Okay, I'm just saying it's it's a win-win. I mean, it would be genius. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I want to know what people think about the name Chili for a female. It's well, not going to change. Yeah. By the way, so this is just. I just this wa- is if not you're a matter. Excited? Just say yes. Yeah, this is not a matter <laughs> of trust me, because I've I've. It's not a debate. I've yeah. thrown the question out there to like be like, is this a non-negotiable thing? And it's like. A thousand percent non-negotiable. No, it's not n- non-negotiable. So I just want people to say just, yes. I just like say it. like you know what? Just say you like it. It yeah. doesn't matter because your opinion really doesn't matter. <laughs> or I'm gonna block, start blocking. Yeah, it doesn't people. matter. Just <laughs> no, I'm lie, joking, but... lie through your teeth like I do. Just say you know. It's, lie through your teeth I am like kidding. I do. I am kidding. You don't like chili. I, I've I told you a long time ago that you can name the dog. You know. That in many ways, it's your dog. You can name the dog no, how, also, whatever you want. Whatever yeah. you want. Like, this is this is your dream to have this dog. I've had many dogs over my life. So yeah. I'm happy for you to have this, this, you know, experience, you know, for the first time. No, so, and also, I mean, for me, I mean, like you were saying before, it's not just like a name. It's not like, oh, let's find the name. Mm-hmm. But it's been the way... I called all my stuffed animals that were dogs yeah. since I was like three years old. It's a little creepy, but it's a little creepy, but it's true. You no, know, it's and, your, and it's my your mom dream. calls me Chili. Oh my god! Just because she knows that I've always uh, talked about having a puppy called Chili, so, so I would feel tell, like betraying myself. The expectations like are very low. Is something <laughs> this is low key. We're getting a dog. Yeah. So it's a regular thing. So Mario J was saying Chili or Chile? No, Chili. C H I L I. Chili. Like like a baby back rib. Like chili beans. That's how my mom calls me sometimes. Chili bean. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm gonna be okay if I can play for the dog um the chili's like baby back rib um like commercial. I'll I'll feel okay. And uh I haven't um, shared this, oh but I God, got. No, no, you know mode. this. Oh you yeah, because it's like yeah. revelation. Finally, time. got a dog. You have a kid. <laughs> what else? What else? This is like uh, it's a lot today. I mean, I was showing my sister the little like the pup charm thing that I got. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When we decided that we were gonna get a dog, I knew it was gonna be chili, so I got a little like chili pepper for the. Uh, color? Yeah. So, again, <laughs> super low, low expectation. expectation. Yeah. This is really relaxed. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're getting a dog. Yeah. I think, you know, in my family, I mean, I don't remember. I obviously don't remember. I was too, I was very little when we got um, our uh, wiener dog, Dachshund, mm-hmm. Hortensia. But every other dog after that, I think either my father showed up from nowhere with a dog. Like, he made that decision that day. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask us. Uh, Or it was like, I remember with uh, Simon, the Mm -hmm. golden. Yeah. um, He was like, "Um, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. Uh, Come drive with me because we're going to go get a dog. (laughs) And I was like, okay. And we went to like um, Briseño, that's outside Bogota. Mm-hmm. And uh, and you got a dog. And we got a dog, and we just looked at a you know a whole runt, and we were like, okay, let yep that dog. And he you know he was a great dog, but um yeah, but uh, every other dog was just um, like that day. I feel it was just like you that's know, how oh, I a... like that was my dream as a kid. That maybe somebody my would parents show up. would be like, you know what? She wants a dog so bad that we should just get it for her birthday. Oh, really? Every birthday I was like, 
because they were always always asking me like what do you want for birthday and i was like a dog and they were like no no i mean no yeah, i mean I what do you want yeah so i was like no i don't know yeah, here's what, an iphone a t-shirt thank you and what do you want for christmas and i was like a dog like if you could see all the uh letters i wrote to santa when i was a kid so again all of them said a dog <laughs> so this is like th so, this was we're getting like a dishwasher or a dog you know doesn't matter yeah but 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 it's beautiful and also i mean it sounds dumb but no as i was saying i saw this dog and i knew i loved the like the dog but also i felt that the name fit the dog okay which is cool because i already had a name so it had to fit the dog i mean it didn't matter but it would it would have been nice yeah but i saw some other dogs and i was like well it could be chili yeah it could be okay but i saw this one and i was like oh yeah she is chili she well, is chili uh, chili oh no why the accent over there like chili but with a twist I don't yeah. know. No, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be dumb today because I'm excited. So No. I, once Bear again, with me. very excited for you. Uh, and for us. Yeah. I know I mean, that you say be, in I'm the best be, way. Yeah. Th that's the thing. I'm going to be excited because I've always had dogs. You know I like dogs. No, so. and it's a decision we both took. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. know that you But those it. are all givens. I, th that to me is like a given. And no, maybe, that's why I'm saying I know that you're excited because I know that the, that was a decision that, we both The fact took. that I was like, okay, let's get a dog. It's like... I don't have to be your level of excitement, which is like crazy here because you've waited <laughs> your whole life for this. Uh, no, like crazy here, like like exaggerated mm -hmm. here or not exaggerated here. Just just, you know, very just much here. Yeah, just, very much so up here. Mm. And the thing is, I've shared my life with like five dogs. So I'm like here, you know, it's great. Another dog. And when I say it's great, it's because, OK, yeah, I'm ready. Like I'm I'm in. I'm ready. Um, but I also, to be fair. You have to understand that I can't match that level you're in. Like, I didn't write to Santa. Like, I wanted a Nintendo. Mm -hmm. So, I would, you know, I was fine with not asking for a dog because there was always a dog. Yeah, because you had them. Yeah. Right, right. So, so, yeah. So, I could never match your level here. But even from here, I'm, like, super excited. I'm yeah. super excited. I'm no, just... No, and I, and I know that you love dogs. Yeah. So, it's... And I know, too, that... You're not the type of person that, like, builds uh, your expectations. But you just let well, things I'm, be. I am so I think, very much a realist. So. Yeah, so I think that you are going to get excited once you can have the dog. I get excited and, when the dog is here and we take it to the vet and they see no issues with it. And then weeks go by and, it, you know, it's growing healthy. Yeah. That's, that's when I get excited. Yeah, but she looks so healthy. Well, yes. She looks but good. It, you know. <laughs> she looks so good. No, it's it. I was in the video call. I'm sorry. It's. Just, I promise it's the last thing. No, no, I, no. I, it's a lie. But uh, I was in the video call and she was like, no, I'm going to show, show them to you. They're having a nap. Because as I was saying, it's her and two other puppies, two other male puppies. And she was like, they're crazy because I have a little bed, like a little crate for them. And they always sleep to the side. And she went to the room with the phone and she was like calling them. And then you could see like these tiny things getting out from the, like between the crate and the wall. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. I was so excited. I am so excited. So let's say hi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. So Drew Thompson was saying, hi, guys. Hey, hey Drew. Drew. Monolith Prince was saying, so glad to see you. Oh, thank you, Monolith Prince. Uh, Daniel Martins. Daniel Martins, me enredé. Mm -hmm. Dice, buenas tardes, Nico y Dani. Hola, buenas, Daniel, buenas. ¿qué tal? Gabriel García Márquez. Mm. O sea, Germán, dice hola. Hola Germán, ¿qué tal? Eso que te mandé fue porque Germán fue a una expo. Uh -huh. Es una persona. Vio? Germán, no me acuerdo ahora cómo se llama. Leal, ¿no? De pronto. Esa persona leal. Pues no, no sé si sea leal, no sé si sea noble, 
No, de apellido leal, eh, el artista. ¿No eh, era de La Vega? O de La Vega, no sé, mi amor. A ver, ah, a ver. ya miro, ya, ya miro. Es este, ya miro. en Madrid de España la, la muestra. Sí. Sí, y dice... Y dice... Estamos en el stand, bla, 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 hasta el domingo con Álvaro de la Vega, ah, Adalina Coromines, Álvaro de la Vega. Guillermo Fornes. Yo creo que es un tipo leal igual. Sí, debe ser muy leal y muy sí. talentoso. Qué sí. belleza sí, pero de muy instalación. Lindo. Me encantó. Entonces se lo, se lo mandé a, a Dani. Sí, divino. Germán, muchas gracias. Muy buen gusto de Gabriel García. Mm. Muy buena recomendación. Mm. Eh, a ver... Dice Drew Thompson, oh, amazing, very exciting news. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing your excitement with me. Which one, your kid or, or the... Uh... No, no kids, just dog. This new kid? Just a dog. And um, let's see, Drew was saying, love the name gen genuinely. Oh, thank you. I love it too. Mm. Victor on cartooning was saying hello. Hey, Victor. Hey. How are you? Cabe Costes dice, ja, ja, ja. Dani es una inteligencia artificial de YouTube. Cuando dijimos que yo existí solo cuando salí. Mm -hmm. Pues sí, la gente creía. La gente creía eso. Eh, ¿Y pero, lo soy? No sé. Pero un AI que compró un perro, aparentemente. Un AI que tiene un perro. Sí. Que va a tener un perro. Y que eh, pronuncia mal. Eso soy yo. Mm. <laughs> Arrow Art Center. So is it Cody? That is Cody. Cody. Yeah. Cody was saying, hey guys, I can't chat from my other account. Am I already in timeout? No. <laughs> no, 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 Cody. No, for sure no. So let me check. But I'm sure no. Um, Why would he think he is? No, because they're saying they can't chat from the from the other user. Oh, oh, I don't know. So let's see, because I can see here. Why um, did you block code? That's no, I haven't. That's blocked, terrible. No, I'm just seeing the AI going uh, the haywire. blocked accounts, but they are bots, 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 bots. Closets, closets, closets. Closets, closets, closets. Yeah. No, Cody, you're not blocked at all. No, no, I don't know what it is, but no, of course you're not blocked. Uh, and uh, Cody was saying, I like the name Chili either way, but do we get to know what breed? You could, I mean, you could know when you we say, get it. No, nah, you should say. Are you <laughs> Maybe I could share. It? No, but you know what? Because I wanted to show a picture. But then if something happens to the dog before we get it, well, I'm going already, to be broken hearted. I know, but you already like put money down. You already told everyone. So the dog exists. So you I'm saw gonna it share, the... So I'm going to share a photo here. <laughs> Ay. Nicolás, Nicolás. So I'll give a clue. When the dog is full grown, it's about this size. <laughs> It's tiny, yeah. Uh, let's see. Mm. Where is it? Honestly, Danny being like petite, she favors, she always favors like smallness. So this was like inevitable. I know. Should, like take a screenshot on the uh, video that you showed me. Wait, look. Well, I saw it already. Oh, whichever one you want. That last one. Okay. That last one is cute. Jesus. So it would take me one second because I have to blur out um, some info in the image. So just one second, please. You don't? No. Yeah, 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 because it has a... Yeah, trust me. Okay. Oh, these are photos that they sent you or yeah. what is it? Oh, I thought it was like Instagram posts or something. If it's an Instagram post on their their um, account, you can share that. No, wait. You can no, share no, it. No, trust me, trust okay, me. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
I'm just taking out the info of the place. Because it has like a watermark. So. I think you could share all that. No, stuff. I prefer it like that. Okay, okay. What, how do how you feel comfortable? <laughs> oh, he's so cute. She's so cute. I'm sorry. I always say he. Or it. Just call it it. You know, for the time being. Or the mm -hmm. dog. For the time being or the dog? Yeah. Call it the dog. El perro. La perra. Yeah, the dog, the dog. Like a... So, I forward it. Uh, drum roll. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pankernik was saying day. Yeah, day dog. No, but yeah. No, it, it is fine. It, I mean, it's a dog. So, let's not go crazy here. It's fine. Mm. Why am I laughing so much? You're nervous, happy. That's yeah. that's fine. That's cool. Mm. <laughs> so, where's um Mrs. Face Chili? Reveal. So, Mrs. there you Chili. go. That's our dog. Future. Like I see it and I want to cry. It's so beautiful. Oh my god. It's so tiny. So, it's so tiny. Low low expect like super low. Key. No, it's so tiny. Super I mean you can even key. see like the tiny like, oh, bit yeah, of their belly to the side. Jesus, yeah. I melt. Like I saw it and I was like dying. Cause also that was the color I wanted for so long, but it was hard to find. So <sighs> Yeah, you guys are lucky. If you if you had given Danny more time, there would be a balloon with like pink confetti. So no, she's so beautiful, Nicolas. Oh like God. I'm, I'm super sensible, and you know that super yeah. sensitive, whatever. Yeah. I cried while I was oh uh, deciding. Jesus. Well, just like happy tears. I know. And then I cried oh uh, when I was uh, giving a deposit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the money, the money's <laughs> no. away. Money's off. No, Tom that Thumb. That makes me cry too. Tom Thumb was saying, wait, is that full grown? No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. So she was born the 2nd of September. The, si se dice así? Yeah, you can yeah, say it like September that. Yeah, September the 2nd. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're happy yes. that you can meet Chili. Yes. Super chill, by the way, as you can tell. Well, because of the name. Super chill. E. I know you're referring to the situation. Oh, and yeah. To my excitement, yeah. but. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Chili. Now, once again, I'm very happy. Yeah. I j I'm going to take it out. Like, I'm going to take it out from the screen because then I'm not going to be able to concentrate. I think you're not able to concentrate regardless. <laughs> oh, I know because she's so cute. I mean, yeah. And look at that, like the little spots of color. Yeah, I, She's I, like a little like fox yeah. thingy. <laughs> she's so I'm, cute. I'm, I'll be so happy when I can see the dog at the vet. And uh, the yeah. vets say, oh, the dog is great. Also, Congratulations. I'm, I have to, great. I have to That's travel. That's I'm going to be like, yes, the dog is fine. So we have to travel, but I'm going to be the one that travels. Yeah, yeah. It's inside our country, but I have to travel to pick Chile uh, and bring her home. Like plane ticket travel. That's yeah. why Danny's going to go alone. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. And it's going to be, I mean, I'm going to travel, pick her, and the same day I'm going to come back. So. Uh, super chill. Super chill. Yeah, you're a regular As type chilly. of let's buy a dog sort of deal. It's my first dog. So. I know. And she, I mean, she's worth it. Look at that face, Nicolas. I'll look at look it. Look at that tiny nose. And I'll look at, the look ears. at it at the vet. Ah, so beautiful. I'll look at it at the vet. So, yeah. Uh, that was chilly. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll be healthy from here till December. 
Pankernik was saying, oh, or oh, I, I just never know how to say it. Catherine was saying, oh my God, so cute. Uh, when can Chile be welcome at home? Uh, Let's after say we came, December. Yeah, so after we come back from uh, the shipping of the books. Yes. In December. So, yeah. Beginning beginning of mid December. So. Uh So I want to know if someone guessed the breed cuz they were asking what breed? What breed is it? So Pankernik was saying, "Is that a mastiff?" No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a tiny tiny mastiff. Yeah, tiny <laughs> Napolitan mastiff. Uh for our apartment. My new medium is going to be slob, slobber. Mm, let's see. Cody Winicky was saying, oh, cuteness overload. Yeah. yeah, she's so beautiful. Robin Sita West 13 was saying, so cute and a heart emoji. What is it? Try and guess, try and guess. I want to see if maybe someone gets it. It's a gerbil. Mm, Liad was saying, very cute. It looks like a chipmunk. Yeah. yeah, it does. It does. Uh, I'm going to get it a wheel. Little wheel. Elaine was saying little baby. Yeah. Tiny, like tiny baby. That's why when, what I, when I was saying that I was in the video call and they were like getting uh, out of the space between the wall and the crate, they look like little like cotton balls running <laughs> towards the phone. Yeah, it was actually hiding in the <laughs> light socket. Uh, let's see. Johnny Matatia was saying congrats. Thank you so much, Johnny. Johnny, thank you. Eh, Pankernik dice, atale un globo con helio y va flotando por la casa. <laughs> se mueve moviendo la cola. Yo creo que un globo normal la hace flotar. Sí, yo creo que un, un globo de chicle, sí. una bomba de chicle. Yo creo que un, sop, un soplido. Sí. Eh, Emily Painting Elk was saying, oh my God, and heart emojis. Yeah. Marta Sánchez was saying, was saying Chili Mili Vanilli. Oh, my God. Oh, that's a good idea for a song that I can oh, sing to Chili. Oh, that I'll never know. <laughs> I'll be out of that room. Uh, Tom Thumb Jordan was saying, need some tiny inflatable orange armbands if it's going swimming. <laughs> uh, Catherine was saying, is the drawing a future... Picture of Danny after many sleepless nights. Yeah, after she realizes she got a dog. Cacaito Pelón dice, hola, hola, ¿cómo están, Cacaito? Necesito que te oh, devuelvas sorry. un poquito en el video que acabo de mostrar. No, te lo voy a mostrar. Cacaito, te presento a Chili. Llega en diciembre, pero decidimos, Chili, te la presento. Ah... <laughs> uh, Mario J was saying, Nicolas, are you looking forward to painting Chile? Yeah, actually, yes. I mean, I mean, the dogs got to pay back the money. So we got to sell a bunch of those paintings. So, yes, uh, she's got to work. She comes in through that door. You got to work. My kids know it. You know, if I don't sell a couple of paintings to them, there's no school. They know it. So... <laughs> You know, this dog is going to be a uh, part of the family, so she better pick it up. Um, She's got to make up for, like, plane tickets, vet. I mean, we're going to be, like, uh, no. you know, in the red zone for a little bit. Paintings suddenly are, are uh, more expensive. Mm. Cody Winnie was saying, is it a mini Australian Shepherd? Oh, geez. No, but it looks like, because it looks like... I mean, because of the color combo, it looks also like uh, Tyson. Okay, no, but no. Because it's Meryl. But no, no, no. Yeah, no. No, no, no. no. This is like, I'm going to give a hint. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this like a game, but mm -hmm. it is the smallest uh, breed of dogs. So now you get it. Robin Sita was saying, yeah, a cup Yorkie? Nope. Nope, no. nope. Uh... 
Tom Tom was saying, are we getting a dog cam for streams? You're going to get me holding the dog. Maybe sometimes. Yeah. If they like to be held. Tom, uh, I think. Yeah. Tom Tom Jordan was saying Chihuahua. Yes. So it's a long coat Meryl Chihuahua. Yes. Ah, uh, Cacaito dice, ay no, qué cosita más mimina. Sí. Oh, God. Cacaito, después de hablar contigo esta mañana, eh, decidí, decidí. Cody was saying, miniature dachshund. No, we were thinking about a dachshund, to be honest. Uh, but we settled with a chihuahua. So, yeah, we're getting a Meryl chihuahua. Muthana was saying, is that Spanish? What we were talking? Yeah. Yeah, it's Spanish. And the dog is also too. Well, not Spanish. No. Mexican. Mexican. Yeah. But actually, they have a Russian dog. Russian. Russian. Russian uh, father. But they're Mexican. Chihuahuovsky. That was terrible. Uh, so, let's keep saying hi. I'm going to be derailing all the time today in the conversation. So. Now, how a Russian chihuahua ends up in the Atlantic coast of Colombia? Sure. Yes. No, I know that. Because uh, the owner was living in Spain and then they traveled to Russia. But now they're living here. Okay. So... Like stones throw away. Yeah, simple. <laughs> I Regular bet she's trips. so beautiful. I'm just super excited. I wanted to, sh to share to it shit? with you all. Oh, and now oh, that shit. we shared that, oh, Jesus. we can share the, the painting. The name of your kid, apparently. No, 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 no. This the, estranged kid. The painting that you uh, got for me as a gift that we weren't able to show before. Um. Yes. So can I bring it? Well, it's your painting. Yeah. So I'm going to show it because it's beautiful and we usually share the things we yes. get from other artists. Yes. So it's going to be one second. I'll be back. So even though I can't uh, portray the excitement uh, that Danny has um, right now, I'm going to paint Danny. So... Um, I already see a ton of things that I'm probably going to change throughout the, or sh or slightly adjust throughout the painting, you know, um, stages of this or the underpainting um, stage. I feel, I fear, I feel. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how this goes. But um, no, no, that's, uh, I was going to tell you. No, 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 but, um, no, 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 I'm, no, I'm, I'm fine, not, because I, yeah, so you got this painting, yeah, me. yeah, so let me, I'm gonna look for it here, how, wait, trying to remember the artist's name, um, um, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Put me on the spot. I should remember always an artist's name. Oh, f fuck me. It's my fault. But I'm not going to stop till I remember the name. I'm looking for it, too. Mm. Let me see. Let me see. Um, let's see. I thought I saved something of his recently. No, I did too. Well, you have like as soon less, as you. You have less stuff saved than I do. But no, um, I think you 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 messaged it to me. Um. Let's see who got theirs quickest. Check the chat. Maybe they. Yeah. Um. Oh, I thought our chat, and I was like, yeah, I'm checking it. No, no, no. Well, it's that's our chat. Um, Jesus, we 
just send a lot of memes, Nicolas. Between you and me. Between you and meme. We can't. This is out of respect for the artist. We we can't keep going if I don't you know if I don't find the artist's name. And he's a terrific painter. So. Mm. Come on. Come on. Oh my god! I saved so much stuff here. Does someone maybe in the comments, like no, if you know the us, name? This is us. No, no, no. But if someone knows the name, yeah, maybe they can help us out. This is a little embarrassing, but I promise I, I, I won't forget after this. Mm. Okay. Come on. Okay, no. I think I, I know how to do it quicker. No, I think I'm way back. Mm. No, let me do this. D Danny, you keep going, like chat, and I'll I'll do this. Okay. Promise. Okay. Okay. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry for. No. 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 I'll. I'll. I'll keep it here while I while I find the um the artist's name. Um. So. Mm -hmm. The artist is Nicolas Mijanic. <laughs> um. Oh come on. Mm. Kevin Balefuss. Kevin Balefuss. Kevin Balefuss. Kevin Balefuss. So he's a terrific artist. He's a really, really good painter. So uh, please, just to make up for my mistake. Yeah, I'm going to share. Um, no, I was going to ask just everyone to go into, um, well, follow him. And buy something. Yeah. So just to make up for, for this very shameful moment of me. So I'm going to uh, share their Instagram so you can check it out. Because they have amazing things. Yes. And. Uh, Go buy something. They did this uh, painting of a chihuahua. Oh, I loved it. it. When I saw it, I loved it. Yeah. So we knew that we were getting a chihuahua. So Nicolas um, got that as a present for me. Let's see. Mm. País Llanero dice Chihuahuowski. Ha, ha, ha. I love that. Perdón, Jair Piñeros dice Chihuahuowski. Chihuahuowski. Um, so, where was I when I was saying hi? Let's see. Mm. Eh, Javier Ugarte dice Hola Dani y Nicolás Tengo una pregunta Hola, No de hidratación <risa> ¿Qué? Una pregunta no de hidratación Ah Javier pregunta siempre De qué estaba tomando sí. Ya, perfecto Cuando dicen Oil on canvas Es óleo en tela Oil on panel Es en madera Oil on board Tengo la confusión ¿Cartón entelado? No No sé No Bueno Oil on canvas Tela pero muchas veces la gente dice como, le dice incluso al lino canvas, pero pues uh -huh. normalmente el canvas se refiere es como algodón, pero hay, hay mucha gente que por, como de manera mmm, taquigráfica, pues, le dicen, le dicen a, al canvas, le agrupan como todas las telas, como, o no todas las telas, por lo menos el, como la lona, el algodón y el lino. Um, Wood, no, wood debería ser solo madera. Dijo oil on wood. Ya te digo. Dice eh, oil on panel es ah, madera. Oil no, on board. No, oil on panel es no madera. es madera. Es que eso es lo que pasa. Uh -huh. Panel y board pueden ser parecidos, honestamente. Porque un panel puede ser de cualquier cosa. Puede ser un MDF, puede ser, eh, eh, no sé, Madiflex, puede ser. O sea, 
todo, todo soporte rígido le pueden decir así, pero panel no, no, es que hay panels de wood, pero hay panels de, de fórmica, o sea, no tiene que, no tiene que referirse a, a, a madera. Si es sobre madera, yo diría oil on wood. Y si es, por ejemplo, sobre lino, yo diría oil on linen. O sea, yo trataría de hacerlo más, más específico. Sí, incluso hay gente que es así, dice sí, oil mejor. on cotton. Y uno puede decir, sí. y si es como un, un panel específico, por ejemplo, uno dice oil on masonite panel. O sea, panel se refiere si es a soporte rígido. Siempre, siempre. Y board puede ser igual. Board no necesariamente, o sea, ne quiere decir que es como un cartón. Eh, puede ser como menos... O sea, igual son rígidos los boards. No quiere decir que sean entelado, ni montado, ni nada. Pero, pues, yo también he visto que board puede ser... Hay gente que le dice board a, a un pedazo como de, de fórmica también. Uh -huh. Como a un aglomerado. Entonces, sí. la verdad... O sea, es mejor decir... Como ser Exactamente en lo que está pintado. Descriptivo, sí. Sí, exactamente en qué está pintado. Eh, y Javier dice, ¿qué es el matcha, Dani? Ay, Dios. Me encanta que Javier había dicho, no es pregunta de hidratación. No, Javier, pero... ¿Qué es el matcha? Javier, Javier, el matcha es eh, té verde, pero eh, son las hojas de té verde. Entonces, muelen las hojas de té verde y eh, las cortan en un momento preciso donde el verde está más potente porque son unas hojas como que las ponen a... las cultivan en la sombra. Pero ese es el... el... <risa> El matcha. Eh, sí, muy rico. Eh, Liad was saying, hello, all new OPL paintings will come with dog hair now. Ah, uh, hopefully it won't shed. No, no, no. The dog won't shed too much. No, and we and we uh, did a research, and they don't uh, shed that much. Honestly, you've done most of the research. Yeah, I'll, I'll be but honest. I shared them with you. So yeah, that's you why I say we, but, we, but we've I, done I, the research. But yesterday we did a research with you and... YouTube videos. Yeah, but that's research. I no, mean, no, no, I'm giving you props. I'm not I'm not saying that I'm not doing anything, although I'm not doing anything. But I'm, I'm saying that this is all you. This is good. Mm, Pankernik decía, buenos días, lindos. Eh, gracias por eso. Bueno, ¿o será que los días están lindos de pronto? Eh, bueno, ya no me siento tan bien, pero bueno, puede ser también eso. <laughs> Johnny Matatiao was saying hello, Danny and Nicolás. Hey, Johnny. Ah, uh, we uh, said hi to Johnny. Yeah, but Johnny was saying something else about mm. the dog. Oh, okay. They were saying adorable. So I'm just reading the comments in order. Because okay. before they were saying adorable, they were yeah. saying buenos días. Eh, good morning. So, yeah. hello. I painted Johnny's um, Johnny who did you ask for for the rewards because I know I already painted yours but I'm curious mm, let's see mm. Elaine Shukri was saying Danny if the name is personal to you then that's what you should name your dog yes. oh there's no Elaine there is no <laughs> Doubt about this name. Yeah, that, None. that ship has sailed long ago. Yeah. Mm. Let's see. Pankernix was saying, Are you gonna eat your dog's ribs? No. Oh, it's the baby back. I rib. know, but no. Well, no, not yet. No. Mm. Mm hmm. Mario J was saying, I love when dogs are named after food. It's perfect. You know, I, I, I don't Where does know. this name come from? Well, I don't know, but I think it was because when I was very... Um, little? Little, yeah. I was like, chili, chili, chili. Like, so like a sound? Yeah, I don't know. Like calling a dog. I don't know why. Oh, I mean... There's that's... people that do like sounds calling them. Yeah. Maybe that was the sound I did oh. when I called dogs when i was a kid like yeah. a toddler so that stick in my head Probably. and i had the like the husky uh plush toy and yeah. it was chili and then i got 
like other toys and there were chili like chili one chili two chili three do you think the husky's name you know how they name them sometimes like they have a tag and they name them mm -hmm. like chili would be a perfect husky name because they're always like in the snow mm -hmm. and they're cold no, you but, know, like cold snow. No, but you know that the, the dog didn't have a, a tag with the name. I mean, it wasn't the name of the toy, but that would have been super cool. Maybe. But no. Oh, I'm going to start believing that. No, I have pictures on. of myself with the dog. Yeah, but and it was the a, like a tough dog that we bought. No, because I rem even remember when we bought it. Yeah. It was in a shelf. It was like a, like those big shelves of plush toys. And it was the only dog they had. And that was the dog because it was huge for a plush toy. And that was the dog that I was uh, wrapping. Um, About? No, no, no. Chilly like dog. shoe shoe ties oh. around as a collar. And I carried. Shoelaces, yeah. Shoelaces. Yeah. ¿Qué dije yo? Shoe ties. But shoe yeah, ties. shoes can wear ties. Okay. Yeah. Formal shoes. Um, no, I, I was thinking tie your shoe. Oh, okay. So shoe ties. <laughs> and I carried the plush toy around. But I knew that it didn't have like a little thing with the name or something. Okay. That's the that's the story I'm going to choose to believe. The one of the box? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um, let's see. Olguita dice, congratulations, Danny. You have your little dog. Olguita, I have to... Olguita, no, pues en español. Olguita, tengo que compartir las fotos en el grupo. I know, my mom loves it if you speak... English to her. So, Olguita, I have to share the photos in the uh, group chat we have. So, it's arriving on December. But yeah, we decided on dog. So, yeah. On dog? On a dog. Like okay. on one oh, okay. dog. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Hmm... Javier Ugarte dice, estoy de acuerdo en que lo tengas en tus brazos y vas a saber si cuadra Chili. Lo digo por experiencia, mi perro se llama Guru, jeje. Javier, no, por favor, por favor, no. No, ya, o sea, es que yo lo vi en una foto y supe que es Chili, entonces es el, Chili. No, el perro hubiera podido ser un bulldog, un gran danés. Eh, todos son Chili. Un gato, todos y era Chili. chili. En o mi sea, corazón, todos Chili. Sí, no, 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 el, el, o sea, lo que, lo que fuera que... Iba a llegar acá, se iba a llamar Chili. Sí. Entonces ya no hay nada que hacer. Por eso les digo que cuando Dani es como, ay, díganme qué piensan. No, no le importa. No, sí me importa si sí mm. me dicen que les gusta. Ah, bueno, sí. <risa> Mentira. No, lo que pasa es que ya me decidí. Entonces, sí, no, no, no. O no, sea, esto... incluso me decidí desde antes de que eso fuera una decisión. O sea... Tiene más reversa. Uh -huh. Un paracaídas. Eh, dice... So, Elaine Shukri was saying, love the painting on Freud on Insta, Nicolás. Oh, thank you, I'm Elaine. disappointed I missed out on the book, but that's okay. Next time. Oh, thank you. There, there'll be a next time. I, I seriously hope that our experience, I mean, up, yes. up until now, just the designing of it, the printing of it has gone smoothly also. Yeah. Uh, we are expecting this week the copies, actually. Yes. Um, so, we are going to be able to share the... Mm -hmm what the finished book looks like hopefully this week yes uh, it's going to also be not as exciting as today as the dog it but, is super um, exciting Nicole. or as you know your estranged kid announcement <laughs> but um um but yeah well we we're we're hoping that that also goes without problem we'll deal with the problems if they arise like as soon as as they um arise i always think that things can be can appear to be smooth but um i'm always always ready for prepared uh, for the bumps yeah the road, always yeah. i'm always always ready i'm very hopeful and i do everything i can to minimize the risks i feel but it, i think as an artist you you almost live your life knowing that okay when is when is the bad stuff coming like i don't know why we are like that but i think that's just I don't know. That's just how we're bred. So I'm 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 always kind of ready to deal with stuff that, that goes off the rails and, and um but I always feel okay, if problems arise, like we'll take care of them. 
Like that's, well, you know, we're going to be able to do this. So hopefully, hopefully like with the dog, you know, everything will be fine. Uh, and, um, and it will be smooth, but I, I, I do, I do have like, um, like this, this small kind of, you know, itch that I would, I would love to do. Um, I talked about this, uh, the other day, but mm -hmm. I would love to do a book. Um, you know, I, I always loved, um, David LaFell's book. I forget what that one's called. Oil painting, oil painting Dope. lessons from a master. Am I forgetting that oil painting secrets, oil painting lessons, oil painting, something from someone. Um, I always, always enjoyed that book. I always felt that book was like super important for me when I was starting out. Um, I think, I even think Oil it was... Oil Painting Secrets from a Master. There we go. I think that was my first, um, sort of instruction book that I ever had. Mm -hmm. I didn't own, um, Ala Prima because it was very expensive. I mean, it was the same price back then as it is today. So it was 150 bucks. I totally remember this when my roommate Lou bought it. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. He bought it over the phone. I remember he gave his credit card over the phone. Nobody it was really remember. funny. Yeah, and he got it. And because he got it, I, I used to just, you know, devour that book. Um, but it was an expensive, expensive book. Because I think now it's... It's the same. No, look. It's like 150. No, so maybe it's not this one. Is this it? No, no, no. A la prima book. The a la prima. Oh, the, the I'm book. sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's an. Yeah, no, 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 no. The LaFell book was always was super affordable, and I want to do a book like that. I want to do like a book that maybe it's not this beautiful. You know, that LaFell book I had was a softbound book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a soft cover, and I think you know I I have this itch in me. That it's, um, I want one of those companion books that maybe speaks about, you know, the, the painting as, you know, a whole and how to approach painting, mm, I like that. um, and perhaps how to approach it, mm, I would say in an educated manner, but also openly mm -hmm. maybe, which is kind of like how I define my own work painting. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love to make one of those books, but I think that making those books would be way more difficult yeah it would take time yeah because the the paintings i would have to do can't be just paintings they would have to be paintings done for the book and for uh like not lessons for the book but let's say like chapters of the book if anything um so i would love to make one of those books to, if i have to be uh really honest so the other thing is those books would be good like as a let's say as a business they don't make a ton of business sense if you're not able to sell like tons of them um so yeah so you know like like many of our books if not all our books it's more a, a labor of love or a labor of just wanting to do something that i've always wanted to do rather than business like a good business decision mm -hmm. um but we'll see we'll see so hopefully hopefully life will give us a chance to consider doing one of those again yeah johnny matatiao was saying david lynch oh you're the lynch yeah. yeah did you like it i hope you liked it i took like a ton of um liberties on it oh but Just, it's um, so good yeah in terms of design wise and like deconstructing like a lot of stuff but it's finch i mean um, it's, I'm sorry, Lynch, it's Finch. I'm thinking of a uh, comic book artist. Um, you know, but I, I thought it, it made sense. I thought it made a lot of sense to just, you know, kind of unscramble him, unscramble him and then kind of put him together in, in this, um, this, this sort of step ladder, this weird step ladder. Um, so I hope you like it. I mean, Johnny I'm, I'm, was saying, "Oh, I love it. Thank oh, you so that's much." Oh, that's so awesome. You're so kind. Thank you. Um, but that's kind of what I'm doing with a lot of these. I I really hope people realize that 
that yes, it was about making portraits. A, a lot of t I, I hope they, I mean, they have expectations, but I also hope that they trust me in the sense of just, they saw what my painting was about and they were like, yeah, just take a chance. Like, you know, this is who I want to paint and, um, you know, go for it. And even, you know, for example, I painted Nerdrum the other day. Mm -hmm. And even Nerdrum that for me, as a person, I have some issues with. Mm -hmm. As a painter, I, I absolutely love. I, I really, you know, I, I thought a lot about him when I was, as I was painting him. And I realized how important he was when I was young. Like, how really, really important he was when I was young. So... Even though I sometimes may have like a, a bit of a disconnect, mm -hmm. like I did with Nerdrum, there are so there's always so much stuff that is good and that's like, oh, this is a great memory. Like this is a good thing that I can, you know, remember him by. That I can fall back upon that and just enjoy, you know, the painting. So um that's kind of what I do um with the uh with the people like with the people that that uh, the um, the uh, backers send me, I always try to find a way to like say, okay, let's you know find some common ground and and find a way to connect and find a way to like try things out and have fun with the uh, portrait. Mm -hmm. So so yeah. Mm, let's see, Tom Thumb Jordan was saying, is Nicolas going to be reluctant? The reluctant dog dad. Who after two weeks will become inseparable with it and love it more than you? Maybe. Oh, Tom, I've Maybe. loved every single dog that has gone through through my family. I've I've loved and I care about. Yeah. Even like my sister's dog that I spend, like my my uh, youngest sister's dog that I spend a long time with that dog. Now the dog is like super grouchy, and you know he's like, uh, um. He's like super attached to my sister. He's old. He's like an older dog now. But even that dog that, you know, we, we see him at my mother's house. We see the dog at my mother's house. And like it won't even say hello to me, even though, oh, my God, like if I could throw in its face, like the times that I walked, I walked him, that I took care of him, you fed him. that I fed him, that I, you know, cuddle with him, everything, you know, I. I want to be the better person here. In fact, I am the person. It's the dog. Um, but it hurts you. Yeah, of course. But even that treason, like I'm, I'm, I would, you know, I would still do anything for that dog. So, um, yeah. Now, and your other sister's dog? Oh, the one that uh, the one that we gave to my older sister. Oh my god! It's oh enormous. no, no, no! But I was talking about Tyson in this case because yeah. I was going to say that he loves you so much because you were with him when he was tiny. Yeah. And I think he remembers that. That's he an Australian it. pup. Like, that's an Australian shepherd. Yes. You know. Uh, and it's also Merle, the yeah, color, so. My sister got it. The thing was that my sister was um, was on vacation when she got the dog. Mm -hmm. So that dog, I had to stay with that dog for the first, I think, two weeks at my mother's house. Um, and I've never seen, like, a hurricane of a dog <laughs> you know, like an Aussie shepherd. Um, this dog was about, I think, three months. May when, um, maybe less. I don't know why I thought it was... My sister got it. And I had never. I had seen a, a dachshund. I had seen a um, basset hound. Mm -hmm. I had seen a um, golden golden, uh, yeah. golden retriever. And I had seen my, my uh, sister's dog, which is um, just a um, like a mutt. A little mutt. Mm -hmm. um, and they had always been manageable. Always. Uh, even like the, the, you know, dumbest one, the Basset Hound, which is like, you know, absolutely like useless. I mean. Oh, I know. They're no, beautiful. But they, you know, you, you can't train like a Basset Hound. It was like, it, it was crazy. Um, but this dog, the Aussie Shepherd, forget it. Forget it. I had never seen a dog like that. It was a demon. I remember I went to like demon to your house uh, when you were with the dog, mm -hmm. and he was like a cannonball. Yeah, no. He was like running, jumping, running, jumping, peeing, jumping, biting, jumping, peeing again, yeah. pooping. It was like 
never seen that in my life. And like nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you texted me like at 3 a.m. Like he's not, not stopping. I mean, he's jumping. He's not like normal. moving. He's peeing. Yeah. Yeah, not normal. Not yeah, normal. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but your other sister's dog, he is humongous. Yeah. Humongous. I mean, there were pictures that were sent the last uh, weekend, this weekend that just passed. Yeah, because he was, he, my sister put some pictures up that he was just 10 months old. Yeah. But this is, I mean. No, he's like a enormous. bear. Yeah, he's yeah. He's a yeah. bear. Yeah. And he's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice dog. We, yeah. Yeah. We found a, a very nice dog for my sister. <laughs> But um, no, I always care for dogs. Always. Yeah. I've, my whole life, I always... I think dogs are some of the most incredible animals on this planet. Um, but... Um, so, no, I'm, I'm sure I'll care for the dog. That's why I don't... Like, I will, I'll, I will not get emotionally attached with a dog if I don't have it here and it's not in, like, great health. And, you know, Danny... We went with Danny to a place that was about, I don't know, an hour and a half away from here. Maybe mm -hmm. two hours. Yeah, an hour and a half away, I would say. And we went to this little, you know, ranch where, where they had like a bunch of um, dogs, like the one that we got to my sister. Mm -hmm. And we saw the pups and they were beautiful. Yeah, because we were going to get the, the dog for your sister. Yeah. yeah. And they had like two beautiful like Malamute um, Alaskan puppies, Malamute, Alaskan yeah. Malamute. And uh, we saw them, you know, two little brothers. Well, little. Well, they were, they were like puff balls. They were like, you know, big faces, big paws. They were huge, they were like a but they were of, puppies. Maybe yeah. like two months old, three, yeah, two months old, I think they were. Mm -hmm. And the minute you saw them, it, it's like, oh, I'm attached. Like, I, I cannot not be attached with this mm -hmm. damn dog. Like, this is, it's a beautiful dog. I was even sad that day because I thought that, that day we were going to be able to take the dog like in the ride back home to get it to your sisters. Yeah. Do you remember that I was sad because I was like preparing? I had like a a blanket. Yeah. I had I thought... tons of things because I thought that I was going to be like holding the dog yeah. for the way back. So yeah, you could. I took the mo I took money with me. I took like cash, paid for the damn dog over there. I was like, I want this dog. But the, I have to say the, the Owner guy. Of yeah, it. that was um. Um, that had that, what do you call that? Kennel? The breeder. Yeah. The breeder was like, well, let me see. Cause you know, I, I don't, um, I think he said they may have parasites. Cause so he said that they were having like a stomach flu. Yeah. 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 So and he was he like, I don't to... know if they have parasites, so I'm not going to, you know, give them to you because, you know, I, I don't want to give them to you. If and he sick. wouldn't even take my money. He was like, no, no, no. And I was like, oh, no, dude, this is like, <laughs> you were this like dog is amazing. The... <laughs> like, I, you know, I want this dog. This yeah. dog is incredible. And he's like, no, he was a little reluctant. And, you know, I was so like, when you see the dog, we sent my sister photos. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is the dog. Mind you, this is the dog that was going to replace another dog. that Yeah, passed away. a St. Bernard that was given that was gifted to my sister. Mm -hmm. That had like a brain Leon tumor. No. Oh. It was I a Saint Bernard. That had like a brain tumor. Yeah. And had to be put down after like, you know, two weeks after she had because the dog had seizures. Mm. It was like traumatic. I mean, my sister immediately got attached to that dog and we were like, Okay, this is, you know, this is horrible story. This is like too much. And I was like, I told Danny, we got to get my sister another dog. Like, mm. that's the only thing that makes you, like, think about something else. And, you know, these pups were beautiful. We send my sister photos. She's crying. Oh, like, oh, my gosh, they're beautiful. You know, two days later, both dogs died. Yeah. Over at the uh, breeders because they did have parasites. So I was like, fuck. I was like, are you kidding me? And the breeder was devastated too because they were yeah, super sad he, yeah and they were nice nice little dogs so 
we finally, so we're like, no, we got to get my sister a dog. Like she can't go through this roller coaster of a ride. And we found like Danny, like Danny actually did all of this, like, um, you know, research, Search. phone calls yeah. and searching. Yeah, I'm the, the tech. No, yeah. ¿cómo se dice? Como la investigadora. Um, no, no, yeah, private, I don't know. Well, you were in charge of finding the dog. Yeah, I'm always the one that you told you tell me like, hey, we need this. And I like at the end of the day, I will have a list. Like, so we have this plan A, plan B, plan C. Yeah. I contacted 70 numbers and only 50 answered back. And I have this information and that information. So, and I had to do that like in a rush because your sister was not only grieving the first dog but now this dog that she didn't met yeah so we were like in a rush to find a puppy yeah but it's like, like a healthy puppy what do you like you you don't just snap your fingers and it's like yep there's like puppies you know there's a new um runt of of whatever breed you want like available to you right now mm -hmm. like that's doesn't happen that way that yeah. doesn't work that way or sometimes they're like yeah 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 there's a new ¿Cómo se llama? I think it's runt. Runt? Isn't it? Runt? I don't know. Yeah. There's a new runt of I puppies. I think so. I think I'm right. But you have to wait... Uh, yeah, three months. Three months. So you can Which get Which for them. normal people, it's like, sure. You know, I want a dog, so that's fine. You can, I can wait for three months. That's totally fine. But for us, it was like, no, we got to make this right. And we finally find this dog. We have to travel about, yeah, like an hour away from here, maybe. A little bit more. And but we go with my sister because we were like, no, she, you know, she's coming with us. Like she's seeing the dog because now we think like, no, nah, the dog is fine. So the place where we got it, oof, not oh, no, shady. No, no, no. So it's litter, litter, litter of dogs. What is runt? Liad was saying runt is the smallest of the litter. All oh, right, dogs. runt is the smallest one. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. litter. Thank you, thank you. So we go to this place with my sister. Oh my god, it couldn't have been like. You know, I we're don't happy know. the dog is healthy. I think it we saved a, yeah. that dog. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I think but we saved the dog. I think that that's also the reason why I've been super careful about all the research I've done for Chili for the dog we're yeah. getting. Because I've been even like super annoying with my questions. Because I'm like, how's the health of the puppies, and how do you manage this? And uh, what do you do for the vaccines? And how do they sleep? And how do they, like, what are they getting for food? And, like, I've been asking so many questions because I want, like, the only thing I want is the puppy to be healthy. Yeah. So, but so we, yeah, I do, I do understand why you're not getting attached. Never, no, no. So, because it was a terrible thing that happened. I and mean, by the way, uh, Salmon was saying, I happen to walk into a dead dog story. Man, I have a bad time to show up. Hello, everyone. I hope your dogs are okay. Yeah. No, no, no. So we're talking about past stories. So no, the the puppy that we showed, Chili, she's going to be our dog, is okay. She's okay. And yeah. also, just to clarify, because I, I saw some people asking, when did we got the dog? So no, we haven't got it yet. So... We let's say we selected a dog. I know that sounds weird, but I don't know how to say it. Like we picked the dog. We yeah. picked a dog. Yeah, so the dog exists. The dog exists. Yeah, but it's gonna get uh, to us on December, so we have to be patient. Yeah, which so, is not. Yeah, so this was. We finally get the dog. I we I think we all feel like my my sister was like in the car. I was like, yeah, don't go out. Like, I'll get the dog. Because this looked like not a good place for dogs. And, um, you know, hand me the dog. And I was like, the dog was like alongside 10 other puppies maybe. from And, and there were other breeds there too. But I was like, oh my God. Like, there's no way these puppies are surviving here. This is terrible. Um, but we took the dog. Um, and the dog, of course, had parasites. And, you know, this was horrible, horrible. That dog was sick. You know, the dog had to be taken to the uh, vet. He actually had to stay there with, like, um, um, an IV. And they pretty much saved the dog. 
you know, but my sister, imagine my sister. And I was like, fuck me. Like, are you serious? Are you serious? Like when I was, when I was little, you would just go get a dog and you got a dog and it was fine. And the dog was fine. You never thought the dog was like, oh my God, you know, it's probably going to be, you know, uh, this is like a sensitive, like a sensitive moment for the dog. It's like, I don't, I don't think I ever knew about those things or I ever cared about those things. Like it's a dog. Dogs are, dogs survive. And then with my sister, I was like, oh my God, this is like, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. And, but obviously the dog is okay. But, you know, it was a scare. It was, it was a genuine scare that that, you know, dog, uh, whose name is Olafur or Olaf, mm -hmm. that that dog could have passed like the other dogs, you know, when he was like a little puppy. And, you know, that's why. So if, if people were thinking like, come on, dude, why are you like so cold? That Like, just be excited for the dog. Of course I'm excited for the dog. Of course I am. It's just that. Like our record, our, you know, recent record is just, you know, if you don't sober yourself up just a little bit after what happened with those like three dogs of my sister, two that we were involved with, it's like, yeah, this is, let's, let's be happy. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to be so happy when the dog is at the vet and the vet sees the dog and you know, the vet says, hey, it's a great dog. Healthy. It poops fine. Look at it. It's eating. No, but it wait, wait, wait. Because like... Liad was saying, Salmon, rewind and you can see a photo of the dog they are going to get. And Salmon was saying, thank you. It was a beautiful drawing. Rest in peace. No, no, no. What? No, no the what? dog is what drawing, alive. Rest in peace. No, no beautiful Danny. drawing. And they were saying rest in peace to the dog. So no, no this, this is dog... Danny. Danny's still no. speaking. Nicolas. The dog that's on screen is alive. Yeah, very what? much alive. So we're talking about a past story of a past dog that passed away. But this is in the, the dog in the past. But this is the dog we're going to get. Her name is Chili. She's beautiful. She's safe. She's healthy. So, yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I don't. No, because like, I just want, don't want the... No, nah, it's okay. The, I, no, no, no. The things to get confused. No. Yeah, it's okay. She's super healthy. Yes. So, you know, hopefully... When when we take her to the vet, everything's going to be fine. Everything's fine. You know, it's all great. It's like, yes, go pee and poo everywhere. Yeah, and, but uh, also that's why I was so uh, intense with my research of the place I wanted to get the dogs from. So. Yeah, but that's, um, yeah, so that's uh, that's a recent story. So. You, yeah, your sister's recent story just... Well, we were involved. Not, in, yeah, but not in, to have it confused with the dog we're here. Oh, our recent story, uh, not as in, you know, this household, even though we were involved in, in two of those uh, dogs. Pais Janet was saying, hello, Nico, congrats on the kid, Danny. No, Jair, no more confusion for people, no. Oh, yeah, by the way, <laughs> the, the uh, kid thing about Danny, no. She hasn't been like secretly pregnant. No, I'm not having no, a, a kid. Joke. I'm having it's a, a dog. Joke. It's a joke. I'm having a dog. The people a from dog. the uh, breeders told her that how old her do how old was her daughter? And I was they, just... It was a confusion. Yeah, but I, I'm not going to have a kid. No, we're going to have and a dog. dog. Are you kidding me? A Jesus dog. Christ! Yeah, paintings are skyrocketing in price now. Uh, let's see. Mm, let's see. Emily Painting Elk was saying, wow, tune in just in time for the big reveal. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. It's one of the biggest reveals in our Painted Lives history. What? Yeah? The dog reveal. Oh, I thought the kid. Mm, and... Uh, Emily was also saying, I always had big dogs, but fate brought me together with a chihuahua slash Yorkie mix who became my best friend for 14 amazing years. I'm so happy for you both. Big or little, dog love is the best. Oh, yeah. Dogs are dogs. Uh, I yeah. mean, there are so... I got to be honest here. I mean, I love dogs. Some of them... Uh, you know, I don't... 
I don't love that much. Some breeds, I'm like, uh, I don't know. You don't look like a dog. Um, no, I love them all. I don't know. I I don't I don't know if I. Yeah, no. Let's I have my see. favorite. I have some favorites. Oh, I have my favorites too, but I love them all. I think. Yeah, no, cute. no. I, I'm I'm okay saying that I don't love them all. I love dogs. So there's some dogs that I I don't know. They're not very dog like. So. Pais Janeiro was saying, correction, if something happens to the dog, we're all going to be heartbroken. We all oh, wanted Jesus Danny Christ. getting a dog oh, for a long time. God. No, but, but just good energy. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to think nothing wrong is going to happen. Uh, Camilo dice, hola, saludos desde Barranquilla. Hola, Camilo, ¿qué tal? Uy, Camilo puede ir al, a recoger al perro. <laughs> El perro está allá, Camilo. De una sí. vez te lo recomendamos. Desde Barranquilla. Eh, de quilla de quilla eso le dije a mi hermana sí ah, le hubiéramos puesto como cola román o algo no mi amor es chili chili román no ven acá ven acá chili román chili eh, a ver santa marta no ahí ya hiciste algo súper raro santa marta no, no sí, mi amor. santa marta no no ya ya ibas a decir otra más, mira, sí, ya, ya veo preparándote. No, no, no. Eh, a ver. O Joey, le ponemos el pequeño Joey. No, es Chili. Chili Joey. No. Chili. Chili punto. Mm. Ven acá, Chili. Ven acá. Miguel was saying, question for Nicolás. Chili, ven acá. Ven acá. Question for Nicolás. Nicolás. Dímelo. How do you feel about people copying techniques? How far does the technique go before it's pure plagiarism? Ooh, who are you thinking about? You probably have somebody in mind. Spill the... Spill the tea, Miguel. Tea beans. Mm. Yeah. Who are you thinking? Who are you thinking? Camilo Monroy dice, buenas tardes, Dani y Nico. ¿Qué dice Hola, Camilo? Camilo, ¿qué tal? No, to help you out, I think we talked about, like, a dude that was doing uh, Blake Newbert and um nicolas amori stuff yeah i mean that's like yeah don't do that i mean no i guess in in art i don't think i don't feel cool saying that you know hey don't do that in art i really don't and if it's technique stuff it's like yeah you can't i don't know in art can you copyright like technique no i don't think so but Um, I would say don't do that. Like if I was his, you know, let's say college or art school teacher or, you know, fine art faculty teacher, I would be like, hey, dude, great. Like if you want to have those experiences, perfect. That's totally fine. But you can't stop there. Like I'll let you do this for a little bit, but it, there's no way in hell I'll let you stay there for a long time because there's no point in staying there. Um, so, so yeah, I hope the dude, um, it's good because I, I think he has like a TikTok or something that's, I don't know how popular it is to be honest, but this particular dude has, you know, videos of doing, um, he sets stuff on fire, which to be honest, I've never seen Nicolas Amori do to his paintings. Oh, no, no, there are some that may be some wooden paintings that have some, some burnt, I don't know, wood type of uh, surface. But, um, and he does these scratching, like Blake's uh, paintings. Um, yeah, but I would be like, dude, yeah, I, I know that that little bit of clout, the little bit of like recognition, like this weird validation that comes from this very superficial recognition of social media seems like it's important but it's not really like if you really like to paint none of those things matter like none of those things are important so good that you're having that experience awesome it's perfectly fine i think that's perfectly understandable when you know you look up to to certain artists and you're like i want to feel how that feels great let's do a couple of paintings and once you get that out of your system it's like let's move on That's fine. What did we learn? Let's move on. So, yeah, I, I would kindly say those things because I think you have to be kind 
at those moments. So it's not a matter of like, hey, you're not supposed to do that. Like, no, no, what are you doing? Like, what's going on with you? Like, that's uh, theft or that's uh, fraud. No, no, no. I wouldn't even come close to saying that. But I would be like, that's not a good place to stay. It's just not healthy to stay there. It, it seems nice to stay there. Trust me, it's not a good place to stay. So let's move on. Nicholas Mijarovic was saying, I was Number just writing four. to say hi and I hear my name. Haha. <laughs> However, I'm half asleep. Have a wonderful stream and day and everything. Oh, bye bye. Nicola. Always, always. We always say your name. Yeah, but no. It, I mean, it was it was a good thing. It was that Nicolas was not remembering a name. So they were like, uh, Nicolas Mijarovic. Just like saying the yeah. first name they remembered. So. And you are the first thing I remember. Pablo dice, Pablo. hola. Hola, ¿Utilizas alguna técnica como Loomis o Riley para dibujar retratos? Saludos desde México. No, no, yo, yo no me instruí con ninguno de los dos. Mm, incluso no me, no sé. Yo no, yo no tengo mucha escuela en, en, esos, en, en cuanto a eso. Yo tuve, fue como muchos profesores que hacían muchas cosas, todos muy distintas. Pero, o sea, voy de... Grande a pequeño, pero soy re malo haciendo eso también. O sea, yo hay veces digo, bueno, voy a hacer como medio bark. Y entonces voy a hacer la cajita en donde va a estar ese retrato. Y cuando estoy haciendo esto y digo, ah, va a ser así de grande. Después pienso, eh, se vería mejor un poquito más grande. Y entonces hago una marquita acá y empiezo a dibujar como encima súper... Sí, incluso eso lo hiciste hoy. Sí, sí, porque yo soy como re orgánico para dibujar. Como voy brrr, como moviendo todo al tiempo. Como ajustando, 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 ajustando. Eh, porque, no sé, soy igual que pinto, yo creo. O sea, cuando pinto, como que ajusto y ajusto y ajusto cosas. Y siento que... Cuando hago este tipo de cosas, aunque son súper disciplinadas, súper buenas, como de hacer estos cositos así e ir como diciendo esta es la estructura. Y uno puede, y uno puede como componer súper bonito algo si uno hace como esto. Pues uno de, muy rápido dice, ah, ya veo mi imagen. Ya veo dónde va a estar mi cabecita. Ya veo dónde están como mis ejes. Eh, todo eso es súper chévere. Pero... Yo cuando veo esto también digo, ah, me acabo como de encerrar en algo. Sí. Uh -huh. Y entonces tomar decisiones que se salgan de esta, esta como jaulita súper bonita que ya construí para mí. Querer salirme de ahí es más difícil porque voy a sentir todo el tiempo que lo que hago está mal. Si me quiero salir, ya es mal. Como que lo empiezo a asociar como con un error. Entonces cuando dibujo más suelto no pienso como que son errores, sino sino opciones, opciones que tengo entonces que manejar. Entonces, eh, aquí es chistoso, les voy a dar un ejemplo. Dani tiene un cachumbo acá, un cachumbo, espero que entiendan, es un pedacito de pelo. Uh -huh. eh, pero tiene un cachumbo aquí encima que es súper bonito. Y entonces, yo estaba diciendo al comienzo, aquí hice una marquita, yo dije, mi cachumbo va a ser este. Pero entonces, como aquí está el pliegue de la hoja, yo no me quiero pasar del pliegue de la hoja, ¿no es cierto? Sí. Porque no quiero que, digamos, el mentón esté por acá y que este pliegue le... O sea, termine como haciendo una molestia para el dibujo del retrato. Es algo súper básico. Quiero que, quiero que se sienta el pliegue y, y como no tratar de ocultar que es un papel, sino como aceptar que es un, 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 um, un, um, una doble página de un, de un cuaderno grande. Y entonces dije, listo, de acá a acá. Y cuando empecé a hacer el dibujo me di cuenta que la cabeza que quedaba era muy peque. Era como, pues, no sé, todo esto me iba a quedar como mucho más chiquito. Me di cuenta súper rápido. O sea, hice como de acá a acá y empecé a hacer mis marcas. Y empecé a darme cuenta del ancho. Y si me doy cuenta del ancho, como que rápido puedo hacer como dos eh, lo, los, los orificios ahí, como el, el uh -huh. ocular, el orbital, perdón. Eh, y entonces... Cuando vi eso, yo dije, no, pero la cabecita va a ser muy chiquita. O sea, si yo quería esto y que me quepa acá, como que se me encogía un poco la cabecita. Y, y yo soy de los que siempre digo, no, prefiero esta cabeza que estoy dibujando. O sea, prefiero esa nariz con esa boca. 
para este formato, porque ya de una vez me estoy dando cuenta cómo van a ser las manos al lado, cómo va a estar el hombro hacia el lado. Entonces, ahí inmediatamente como que digo, listo, no, esta es la proporción que quiero. Y después pienso en lo que sigue, porque seguramente ahora, ahora lo que me pasó es que ese cachumbo de pelo allá arriba ya no me cabe. Entonces va, va a salir y va a devolverse. Y me gusta. O sea, en ese, en ese momento donde tuve que decir, no, yo quiero que quepa ese cachumbo porque es un, una shape súper bonita, es una forma súper chévere. Pero en el momento en el que dije, ah, pero para que esa forma sea chévere, para que este pedacito acá sea chévere, entonces la cabeza es más chiquita. Entonces en mi cabeza pienso, ¿qué es? O sea, si uno, si uno tiene como una balancita, uno dice... ¿Qué me pesa? Más? Bueno, ¿qué, ¿qué es más chévere? ¿El tamaño de cabeza que yo quiero o el cachumbo? Y entonces yo ahí rápido digo, uy no, el tamaño de esta cabeza pesa mucho, mucho más. Yo quiero eso para mi imagen. Y el cachumbo, pues, si lo tengo que cortar y viene acá y sale acá, no ah, ah, importa, no es tan grave. Entonces... Soy ese tipo de dibujante, más es como, no sé, pienso en todo al tiempo, pienso como en composición, diseño, gesto, eh, formas, cómo empujar esas formas, como que todo lo estoy tratando de pensar al tiempo, entonces creo que no hay como una escuela que contemple como todas las cosas al tiempo al tiempo, sino que las escuelas normalmente son, para dibujar son muy, yo me he dado cuenta que son muy fundamentales, son como cosas muy, muy básicas que lo ayudan a uno a que el dibujo sea como muy sólido inicialmente. Y eso es lo malo conmigo, o sea, yo lo acepto, que mi dibujo mmm, tiende por momentos a no ser tan sólido o no me da susto que no sea tan sólido inicialmente, porque como después de esto viene un underpainting y después lo puedo pintar, entonces tengo opciones para ir haciendo ajustes, cambios reevaluaciones como mi, de mi dibujo mmm, en todo ese proceso y eh, no sé, así funciono yo creo Pankernik dice, quiero saber la definición de cachumbo cachumbo es como un mechoncito un mechón pero es como un mechón normalmente ondulado sí, es un, como que le sale un cachumbito como que alguien está peinado me encanta que estás definiendo Sí. Cachumbo, solo mm. diciendo canchu, cachumbo Cachumbo y cachumbito Si uno lo dice muchas veces la gente entiende uh -huh. Sí, es como estar peinado Por ejemplo, Superman tiene un cachumbito de pelo En uh -huh. el, el que le baja a como Superman Como un mechoncito que sale crespo Exacto, ese mechoncito de Superman así Ese... Pankernik dice un rizo Sí, pero es uno Pero un rizo es como un bucle sí. Un rizo es como esto bueno, un cachumbo podría ser un... Es que un rizo es mucho, mucho pelo. Un cachumbo es como un cachumbito. Es como... Yup. Como menos. De pronto hay menos pelo en un cachumbo que en un rizo. Creo. Eh, Miguel was saying, Nicolás is a very smart and wise man. What? What a kind approach. And I know the TikTok artist, but I was referring to the recent post about Odd and his students. Oh. Is it fair? If the student just keeps the techniques of his masters forever, can the student even surpass his master? Well, students that are better than people that teach them, sure, that happens all the time. I've often said, like, I taught Luisita, Lu Beltran, Luisa Beltran, mm -hmm. how to paint. I think she's a million times better than me. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, a million times better. I've never had an issue saying that. Mm -hmm. Like, I noticed how better she was than me, like, yeah, I don't know, a month after. Like, she was so fast. And I remember what I was doing at her age and what she was doing when she was young. And I was like, oh, like, forget it. She, she was incredible. She's incredible. So she's, I'll be the first one to tell you. Oh, my God. I, I told her all I know, which is very little, honestly. And she took that and ran with it. And she's, you mm -hmm. know, and, but, but I know that she's a million times better than I am. Um, so, yeah. So I think that you can teach somebody what you know and they can do whatever you so here's how i know she's better than me because i know that people say well that's subjective but when i see her paintings and i you know we own some of her paintings and and we love her she's she's a you know she's um been a super cool part 
of our both our lives like danny mm-hmm. knows her also yeah um but she was my student for years and years and um the reason i can say she's better is because when i would see her work i would say to myself you know because this is like you know self-evaluation i would say wow you know when i try to do those things because you can recognize the things that you try to do mm-hmm. that's that's like a super cool thing about when you when you are honestly evaluating yourself you know what to evaluate about yourself so i would see a lot of the things that i would attempt to do in a painting that she would do and i could say she's doing them better than i could like she's doing what i would hope to do but i think she's doing it better than i could and um and i was you know, I always was super fine with that. I always was super happy with that. I think she's one of the most talented people I've ever met, ever. Um, you know, I had Grace as a student, Grace Samosir. Mm-hmm. Grace could draw circles around me. Grace is like, and I didn't even teach her anything. Like I, I was her teacher, but I didn't teach her anything. She's like incredible. And she's, honestly, she draw, she draws like, you know, miles away from me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, students can be a thousand times more talented than than your teachers for sure. Um, and what happens with with Nerdrum is that there's a school. You know, that's what we've understood historically as a school, like a school of thought, like a school that has, you know, they used to have like manifestos, but they used to have like philosophies attached to those schools. Um, it's not super common nowadays because we've gone after the 20th century. We kind of went past that. Um, I'm sure there are a few schools left in art, particularly in painting. I don't think there's like, you know, collectives that are actively, you know, I don't know. I, for example, I hear a lot about perceptual painting, but perceptual painting is not, I mean, it's something that it's a term that somebody is using to group painters, but it's not something that a bunch of painters said, hey, let's do something that's called perceptual painting and let's all gather around this banner and let's all believe in these same things. No, it's not. Like, you know, I don't know. Perceptual painting is just, it's a term that somebody like used to make a lot of artists fit into that, but it's not a movement. It's not an ism. Um, same one with uh somebody asked me about that one um something realism the dude that did the book um what's it called um no it's what's his name john something and he did something realism broken realism um uh something 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 disrupted disrupted realism realism. it's like oh disrupted realism yeah but i don't know if everyone seed yeah john seed who i think i've heard from other painters that he's like a super cool guy so i have no issue with anyone like here but i don't know if like other painters like is every single painter that's in there call themselves do they call themselves disrupted realists like is that a thing that you own Not really. I think that's a John C. thing. He just wants to, like, almost like curating. You're curating a show and you're Mm -hmm. calling a show disrupted realism. And, you know, you you have a philosophy and you see what matches sort of that philosophy. But the people don't have to agree upon that philosophy. The people that are invited to the show, it's like, hey, I want to do a show on this. And you'll be like, okay, yeah, sure. Show my painting. Doesn't mean that, you know, you now have a disrupted realist T-shirt and and you're like speaking about all the great things about uh, this this new ism. Um, I don't think those things exist anymore. I really don't. I, I struggle to to think of something in painting that, you know, that sounds like like abstract expressionists or um, neo expressionists or uh, surrealists. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you guys can help me out if you know of something that is actively like actively works as an ism in the sense of like um you know old schools of thought uh would work so what i think happens in in Nerdrum is that a lot of people that are searching for something they feel like they are you know connected in some way they feel like like the the 
the paintings echo their beliefs. The the attempt at philosophy, the, the, the kitsch philosophy also echoes something that they believe in. I think that's the weakest part of that school, if you ask me. I think that's a very, very weak um, um, attempt at, at sort of shoehorning a um, sort of classical philosophy into into um, a school of, of, of thought, a school of thought of contemporary painting. Um, I really think it's it's very weak, very, very weak. Um, but but you know, but going back to is it okay for people to work in the same manner as their their teacher, as the people as the person that sort of leads this uh, school? It's fine, of course. That's what people are looking for. And that's kind of, it's sad, but if the teacher has a big enough ego, they are, they are going to try to perpetuate, to have students perpetuate their manner of thought, like what they believe in, because, you know, they believe so strongly in those things that they like the, you know, they like to breed this these like emissaries that they're going to then, you know, throw to the, to the world, spread throughout the world, you know, saying like, hey, this is amazing. That's how you keep like a school of thought alive, just by constantly making generations and generations of painters that would believe in the same thing. Um, I don't like that. Obviously, I don't, I, I don't abide by that. I don't think that's a, you know, healthy contemporary way of approaching art. I really don't. I think post 20th century, and that's the thing, you know, it, people that abide by those beliefs, like a, like a Nerdrum school, they're very much at odds with the 20th century. They think the 20th century is like a great tragedy. Um, I don't. I, I actually think the 20th century um, took our shackles off. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's a great deal of responsibility slash liberty that we now have to deal with. By by being you know free from from a ton of the um, sometimes oppressive things that came from classicism, uh, so I think it's wonderful. I think it's liberating. I think twentieth century was fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And this is coming from somebody who loves classical drawing and loves like a classical definition of painting, uh, because what you see like at the nineteenth, like let's say late 19th century, early 20th century, which is probably like the best form of traditional painting. It is like, you know, 2000 years in the making. I'm sorry, like 1900 years in the making. Uh, so, you know, it is so much thought. There's so much, you know, thought that has been um, um, sifted through generations and philosophies of, of countries that were empires. And it survived all of that through painting. It, it really did to finally peak, because I think the apex of that was like the beginning of the 20th century, to finally peak at that moment. Um, but then because it peaked, it also like, because we were working so hard to get to that place, it just opened the flood doors. So at the same time that, um, let's say, Bouguereau was painting, Picasso was painting. It's crazy. Matisse was painting. Craziness, right? It's crazy. But it's true. That is that is the moment that, you know, that the universe was in. <laughs> well, our universe, our small painting universe was in. So it's fascinating. But I do think that schools like that, they feel like that was a breaking point. Like that that's when things started to go wrong. And that's when, you know, uh, naturalist, you know, realist slash classical, whatever you want to call it, painting started to be kind of like persecuted and started to be um, uh, um, sort of opaque by by the um, the advent of, of these newer ways of thinking. Um, but yeah, so I think because they feel reactionary, you know, still, I guess, because that, that, that I think it's very, I don't know, it's kind of like a tired thing to just still be fighting against whatever, you know, moment of the 20th century, late 20th century they want to fight against. But because they feel reactionary um, still, they are very, very um, protective of their school. 
Um, and the way they show they're protective is by, you know, all of them kind of, I don't know, they, they celebrate what they believe in with their work so much so that, yeah, sure, it doesn't, there's not much variation between the people that work there, um, which is the risk of any school. I mean, we learned that about neoclassicism. We learned that about um, naturalism, uh, like, you know, French Academy. There's, there's a lot of schools that if you just treat everyone exactly the same, yeah, you're going to get capable artists, but that doesn't mean you're going to get exciting artists that are going to push things forward. And we always want to push. I think artists... Art has to push. It doesn't matter what you do. You, you know, what you can do can be this or it could be a plop of like color here attempting to say something about, you know, trying to portray oneself. Um, it doesn't matter. But it needs to push. It needs to. To stay alive, it needs to push because it's if not, it just becomes like stagnant. It's like a pool that just holds water there for you know, centuries, and then all the flies and bacteria are going to just poison everyone that tries to drink from it. So it doesn't, it can't work that way. We all, we know this already. Like we have history as our ally showing us that that exercise just doesn't work. So, um, so yeah, so I don't know. I, I think the people that go to these studios, they, they have a certain personality that tells them that they should, you know, something is drawing them towards this, like, it's almost like a black hole. It, they feel the pull. Um, and if it's really important for them, like, I totally understand it. I have a former student of mine that I really, you know, I love. She was like this amazingly talented student, Natalia, and she went there. She went to Nerdrum's studio for, I would say, over a year, and then she went to Russia to the um, Rebin Institute, in Institute for like a year and a half. So, oof. I mean, talk about like, like old school, like, you know, boundaries in, in your, you know, teaching. Um, and she, she wanted that. She gravitated towards that. She needed that. She's, you know, she, I think she's, because she's so intelligent, she can also be critical of it. I think that's the risk that you get. Like if you get too blinded by, you know, whatever goes on in the inside, maybe you're just blindly devout then. But I, I think you, you know, critical thought has to remain. Like your sense of self has to remain. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I don't find it as weird to, and I'm sorry, this was like a long winded answer, but I don't find it as weird as as you may think that that people are working like in the same way i just find it very um strangely old fashioned i don't think this is something that's um anachronical i don't think this is something that that is easily that can easily be transplanted to today um i i think it's weird i really do think it's weird um yeah i don't know I don't know who who knows what's going to happen in the same way that you know when Shanks died um his um I always say Illuminati no but it's not Illuminati his Incaminati studio you know people that were very talented they kind of they still talk about the the you know the the lessons in particularly in color that that he tried to push and he tried to teach and that's pretty good but I do think eventually things, if we let them and if we're open, things get a life of their own and, and they are they become far more flexible than, than we think that they would be. So hopefully, you know, this, this school will also morph into something that, that understands that it needs to be flexible nowadays because I don't know. I don't know. But it's not surprising to me that they work in the same way, in, in, a, in a very similar fashion. And it's not surprising to me that they're okay with working in a very similar fashion. I think that that's just part of that belief. Sorry, again, sorry about that was long. Mm. And I had to stop. I stopped drawing. Get his. El. Eso. 
Oh, Sam, sorry. Uh, Sam and Kutcher was saying when you were talking about uh, Grace and Luisita. Yeah. They were saying, Nicolás, is that what you call talent? Something do Someone doing something hard without effort or without a lot of training? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, say it was, it's, yeah. Yeah, because I knew them both. They were both my friends and they were very hardworking. hardworking. Yeah. Both yeah. So they were very talented. Yes. But they were very, very hardworking. Yeah. Very, very, so it's very not committed. Like, yeah. It's not like they would do something super easy just because. But they were very, very hardworking. And that's why you could see that. Like that what they were doing made sense. I mean, look at how much drawing Grace does. You know, yeah, she just draws constantly. Yeah. Like she, th and it's not because like I, she doesn't need to, to like she's not like oh I'm drawing. No, she's like pushing herself to draw. Mm -hmm. And she was drawing always. Yeah. And Luisita was working always. I oh, mean, yeah. like past hours in the university, she would stay to paint and paint and paint and paint, and she would go in the weekends and paint uh, in blank. Yeah. And she would paint in other spaces. So she was like painting all the time. They were like hard working. Like hard workers always. Oh yeah, all of it is earned. Mm. Carla was saying, "Hi, I love Danny's gaze. There is so much emotion in her eyes, so beautiful." Always, yeah. Yeah. I really like the the gaze in the drawing too. Yeah, I like it. It's very you. Very much you, I feel. Yes. I feel very me. I see me there. I don't That's know how nice. to say it, but Rosaline Dion mm. was saying, love this drawing of Danny. It's going to be an amazing painting. Okay, jinx. Okay, scrolling through comments. Did you get the dog? So we don't have it yet here. Remember, it's going to be on December here with us, but, uh, but we picked the dog. So do you want to see it, Rosaline? If you say yes, I'm gonna show it again here. If you say no, I think you, I think you want to show it, Danny. That's. But uh, I'm gonna wait for Rosalind's <laughs> answer. Mm. Rosalind, go to bed. Rosalind said, "Oh my God, I'm so excited!" So here you go. Meet Chili. <laughs> She's so beautiful. She's so tiny. Yeah. Rosalind, I know you're an answer so time. Is. But go to bed. Hi, Nicolas. She's so beautiful. Rosalind? Yeah. I yeah, mean, Rosalind I would say too. so. She reminds me of some milk ladies. Uh, uh, yeah. Some European milk oh, ladies. Oh, I saw that. Strangely. Yeah, I saw that. But, and it was uh, like But I would say she's beautiful. Game. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I would say. I mean, it, like respectfully, I would say that. Yes. Uh, Carla Angla was saying, oh, my gosh. So darn sweet. So tiny. Yeah, she's tiny, tiny, tiny. Rosalind, I mean, I think Leslie. She's... Okay, but... he's stretching the joke. Okay. Leslie Salas was saying, "Oh my God, yes, that was my reaction when I saw her." Uh, not Rosalind. Well, Rosalind, I haven't seen Rosalind in person. <laughs> it's getting weird. Uh, Leslie Salas was saying, "Can we have a doggy cam during a live stream?" <laughs> I could be holding the dog once we have it here. We're going to get her when she's a little bit bigger because she's tiny right now. No, so I mean, she's you can't get a dog like that size. No, no, no. But I was going to say that she's going to change a bit. But of course, we could. I could have her like hold her for a bit so you guys can see her when she's here. Rajita was saying, oh my goodness, hearts emoji. Made it Rajita. here at the perfect time. Love the name too. I thank you, Rajita. Rosalind was saying, haha, Cody, you know me so well. What was Cody was what? saying, haha, could you imagine Rosalind just saying, hell no, I don't want to see that dog. And Rosalind was saying, you know me so well. That's a joke. It's all a joke. Like, Blocking of course she was Rosalind. Say Right now, no, no, I'm joking. no, no, it was more like, of yeah. course, he's gonna say yes, of course. I know that's why oh, I me. asked. I'm sorry, mm, so let's see, I'm trying to fit in this hand here, it's giving me issues. Mm. 
Leslie Salas was saying, anyone know if he uses a watercolor pencil for the initial sketch? Oh, Leslie, you can ask me. Don't worry. Um, this is, what is this? Yeah, this one's soluble, but it doesn't matter. Uh, ¿cómo se dice? Liam? Liam, yeah. Liam. You Liam know, Matthew. Liam is like a short name for William. Oh, really? Yep. Liam Matthew Art was saying, love the Chihuahua painting. Any suggestions on high contrast painting? High contrast, like, um... Like how high contrast? Like uh, like Caravaggio contrast, or you're thinking way more graphic than that? Van Santa la Oh la la! Was saying hello. A lot of uh, Europeans at this time. I yeah. wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't think we were getting uh, Europe right now. Van Sant was saying hello, Daniel Nicolas. Congrats on the dog. Bonsoir, Van Sant. Oh, and thank you. Why is it a painting of Danny today then? Because <laughs> we don't have the dog with us yet. So the dog, Van Sant, uh, has been picked from the litter. Yeah. So. But it's not here. Dog. So real size. The dog is about this size right now. Honestly, I think it's a gerbil. <laughs> yeah it's about that size so yeah it's not here with us in our house but it was uh, picked from the litter, li litter whatever <laughs> uh, let's see Kristen Mullen was saying hello Danny and Nick just rewinded and saw the puppy you're getting congrats very cute very tiny she looks like a sweet little chipmunk she does she does She's beautiful. Oh, jeez. What? No, I'm so happy that people are getting excited. I wanted to share the excitement. I know. I know. Diana Gaming was saying, LOL, Nicolas would be distracted by her. LOL. No, no. I'll be fine with the dog. I mean, dog is out of here if uh, she chooses to chew on a uh, statue. You know, the good thing is that she's so tiny. Oh, yeah. That she can't reach them. Yeah, they're all in like second shelf from the uh, oh, and that's from the bottom. Too so high for them. So way too high for her. Even as an adult. Paint, she can eat. Paint, I'm fine. No. No, no. no. Don't, don't you eat can the expensive eat paint, paint, not her. No, because she would get sick. Rosalind was saying, I love the doggo. You've waited for Chili for so long. Yay. Yes. Uh, let's see, because I was seeing... Still have to wait a little longer, but yeah, yes. Yeah, December. Well, we're on our way. December, December, yeah. It's like the book. We're on our way. Yeah. That doesn't mean that the book is on their way. No, no. So please. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. The day of the misunderstandings. So Van Sant was saying, I have a question. Yes, Van Sant. I sent you a ref. I picked on Kenyo to, so, to my Instagram and my attempt at it. How would you approach this kind of painting? It's lots of details, and each round thingy has a lot of colors, making it hard to define shadows and shapes. So let's see. Let's give it a look. Mm, let's see. Let's what see. was that painting that you did? Um, what was it of, Van Sant? That you, you thought that it was tough and... I forget what that painting was about. And it was a complicated painting, but I think you did a great job at it. Do you remember, Danny? Yeah, th I think was it was like a... It looked like a... I, I don't know why my brains remember like a, sh like a fishbowl shape in a head. And it was right? like Something red like dominant. That. Yeah, like yeah, orange yeah, yeah. dominant. But let me see. Was it a, a fishbowl or, or like a... Like a disco like, lamp or some, a disco ball or something like that? What was let's, it? Let's see. Uh, so Van Sant. Yeah, it looked like a fishbowl, but it's like a lamp thing. Okay. But yeah, yeah. I mean, we were remembering correctly. Yeah, that was very good. I have good memory. So trust sometimes. yourself, Van Look, Sant. So it was this one? Yeah, so good. And this was That's the That's perfect. Painting. Excellent. And this perfect is the painting. other one. This one's the reference. Oh, a bunch of like chain links. And this one's painting. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. You know, you know what it reminds me of, um, Bansant, of uh, Sangram Majumdar. 
Mm. Like his earlier paintings. Great artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good painting. Yeah. You I think you were more concerned about the shape of those links. Like the shape. Mm -hmm. Than the perspective. So you were very shape, 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 shape. So it it has like this this sort of inherent sacrifice for the shape. And what it's losing is some of the angle that that uh, the um that the uh photo suggests some of the perspective of that shape but repeating itself in perspective um but it doesn't matter it's i you know those are choices i feel you have to be conscious of what you're doing with those choices but those are 100% choices um but i think you're doing good be because you were able to concentrate much more in the design i feel then you treat it like as a repeating shape and I think that lets you simplify it a little bit more. So good. Good job. Mm, Diana Gaming was saying she won't let you paint. Just run over all your paintings. LOL. Oh. Just kidding. No, the good thing is that it's she's quick tiny. Take it back to uh, the. Uh... No, she's tiny. Even if she wanted to, she can't. Hmm. Rosalind was saying, I'm on Ireland's time now, so not too late for me. Oh, Rosalind, Rosalind. Oh, I can't do it. No, that was like... Yeah, no. Bad. It's like real bad. bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Pretty bad, Rosalind. <laughs> Apologize, Rosalind. Rosalind, I don't know. I can't do it. Cacaito dice, tengo mucha emoción de conocer a Chile. Cacaito, Próximo yo año. también. Próximo año. El próximo año. No, ya le diste que en diciembre no lo va a poder conocer. Próximo año. Sí, sí, es como... No, porque en diciembre el perro, bueno, tienen que venir acá, pero el perro sí. no podría salir no, no puede chiquito. Salir. Uh -huh. eh, bueno, estaría justo. Ah, no, porque falta. Bueno, no importa. Rosalind. No, I no, can't do no it. ya. I think it's going to come out and it just doesn't. Rosalind. Mario J was saying. Mario J. Ok, I can't do it. I really enjoy how Charles reads instructional book. Yeah. Few. Oh. Like, foo. I don't know how to do it. Oh, I love it. I would love an Ooh, instructional sure. book from you. Thank you. Oh, I love Charles. I had two of his watercolor books. Loved him. Loved them. Rody Victor de la Cruz was saying, I like your hair color, Steph. Th Sorry, I forgot your name, Nicole. No. Oh, no, this is awesome. So, no. Steph is fine. No, it's Daniela, but Steph thank you. Steph and Nicole. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Steph and Nicole. And Mario J was saying, also, can you recommend any really good resource for learning portrait anatomy? Oh. Portrait anatomy. That's specific. Um... What do I remember? I don't know if I know. I don't know if I studied any portrait anatomy book specifically. Urgh. I'm struggling here trying to remember. Oh my God. How many fingers? Look at this. Look at me trying to draw interlaced fingers. <laughs> Jesus, fuck. Nicolás. I'm sorry, but it, it merits the Jesus fuck. I thought I wasn't off at the beginning, and then as, as I try to do more of the hand, I'm like, oh, this is off, this is off, this is off. Um, Liad was saying, just don't leave any paintings on the ground. You don't want dog pee on the paintings. Oh, no, we have a rack. Or do I? put them I? in the rack. That's what you think, Liad. Dog pee is the new liquid? Well, it's a natural yellowing. <laughs> uh, Van Sant was saying, that was Maisha with a big red glowing bowl on her head. Oh my God, the things you do to Maisha. And Van Sant was saying, can you write the name of the artist you just mentioned? Um. So Sangram. But oh, it's right here. Sangram... It's going to feel weird that I'm writing his name here. Majumdar. I thought they were referring to me and I was typing the name. Oh, well, 
He's always in my brain. So, well, that would make him always in your brain. Mm -hmm. Like in my hair. Oh, yeah. Let's do a Basquiat here. No, that feels like I'm I'm saying something bad about no, him. No, then a heart. No, yes, love you. No, do I love crossing him out? No, and Nicolas, now you're... No. Uh, let's write him again. Because he'll never see this video, but what if? Then he's going to think, like, I misspelled him, which is going to sound ignorant, but no. It's just times two. But that sounds creepy. So, um... Times one. Like, just Juan love. Delgado was saying... Times one. Are those pencils special for underpainting? No, not at all. Not at all. Don't worry. Nothing no, they special are about it. Colored pencils. They're colored pencils. Yeah. Um, they'll just bleed a little bit be when I put a transparent acrylic binder, which is nice, but it's not... It doesn't do anything. Don't worry about it. Rosling was saying, the fingers have movement. I like it. Oh, my God. Mm. The movement, the movement spurred by doubt. Let's see, where was I? Um, mm. I can't even erase the these color pencils. So, Poliak or okay. Poliak was saying, "Who is on paper? Who's Great on job! First? I like it." Where are you from? Okay, three questions. What about right? digital drawing? Four questions. Okay, yeah. first one. So who is on paper? It's me. Uh, Stephanie. <laughs> what, what was your It's Daniela. Oh, Daniela sorry. Ocampo Diaz. So Danny. Sorry. Yeah, forgot me. your name. Uh, two. I forgot. Oh, Where are God. you from? Colombia. So Bogota. Bogota, Colombia. Bogota, Colombia. Okay, third one. Mm. What about digital drawing? Perfectly fine. Fourth? No, no hay más. Okay. We love you. Sangram. No, that's a little, you know, too much. I don't have to lay it that thick. Um, Let me see. What am I doing with this? So what about digital drawing? That was a question. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. Great. It's drawing. I think it's they're asking what, different tool. what you think about it or something Oh, I think it's perfect. Like I think it's fine. It's just a different tool, but it's great. Cody Winicky was saying, I had to go pick up the kids from school. Did we already talk about yesterday's Liverpool match? Oh, so we intense. haven't. Oh, my so God. So intense. Jesus Christ. Jesus Again, Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, yeah, I thought we were going to lose. I even nil. have a scratch. I haven't yeah. shown you how it is today. I mean, it was a little disgusting, but. I... I'm sorry, it is. No, I was like, uh, how do you say it? Chris, cross, apple, cross, something like that? I have no idea what did you try to say right now. That Chris, cross, apple, cross, apple sauce. What? Apple sauce? What is apple sauce? Yeah, Chris, cross, apple sauce. What the hell is Chris, cross, apple sauce? The... The legs, when you cross them. When you cross your legs? That that, when you cross them like that. Look. Crisscross applesauce. Oh, my God. Because I remember that from Never preschool. Never in my life. Preschool? Yeah, in preschool, they call it like that. I think there's like, an, like a song for that. Oh, my God. This I've never heard that in my life. Crisscross applesauce? Never. Crisscross. They just wore their pants wrong. That's all I remember. So... What was I saying with Chris I, Cruz? I, oh, I, that no I was clue. sitting like that. Yeah. Uh, I had no um shoes or socks. Well, no socks, yeah. And uh, Darwin Nunez. Oh, fuck. Jesus yeah. Christ, Darwin. Decided not to pass the ball. do an Just assist. lift your head. Spat, pass the ball, dude. And I did like a terrible movement. Because I was like screaming like, come on! And I screamed... And I scratch my leg with my toe. <laughs> yeah. And so I have a terrible scratch. You can imagine scratch. the talons that she has. Uh, no, of course not. What's that? Ay, Nicolas. That's your left foot. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, pass the ball, dude. Like, come on. Yeah. Come on. That's crazy. It's crazy that he's a, like a professional footballer. 
and he just gets so nervous when he's in front of goal that he just can't see past himself. Like, it's craziness. But I have to say, I was scared in the worst way possible when I read oh, what the, the starting 11 were going to be. Oh yeah. I was like peeing myself in the bad way. We're always in a bad way. I don't okay. Know. Yeah. That's another conversation. I and guess. then the match was not, I mean, it was good. It's pretty amazing. And it was like against All City. Odds. Yeah. Oh, which yeah, is yeah. like best team in the world. Exactly. I think. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like, I mean, we were even having that conversation when we read the lineup. We were like, it's I thought be they like were going to beat us like seven, seven nil. nil. Yeah. Seven nil. And then, Easy. and then. And yeah. then. Well, this is that's vintage yeah. Liverpool. You run like you've never ran before. Yeah. So I was uh, very pleased to see, like, the rebirth. Well, we have to wait. Yeah, but... We got West Ham uh, coming up, and then uh, Forest, I think. But, I mean, they the city was uh, invicto. Yeah, yeah. They hadn't lost. So well, you know that the only t unbeaten team ever in the history of the Premier is uh, Arsenal, is Benguera's Arsenal, uh, and that Arsenal was, God, it's probably one of the best teams ever in Premier League history. I mean, I know there's United fans that are going to say, um, but that team, like Henri and Burkamp, um, uh, it's just. You know, class, mm -hmm. absolute class. It's it's like incredible. So they are the only teams that remain undefeated in Premier League history. They they didn't lose a game. Like they, it doesn't mean that they won all their games, but they didn't lose. Um, and uh, Liverpool and and both Liverpool and City have been super close to that feat uh, in past years, but they haven't been. They always come up short. Always come up short. And people were saying, like, oh, my God, like, they're going to do it. Like, they have a team to do it. And, uh, yeah, so that uh, dream crushed by Liverpool. That's great. Cody was saying it was starting to get annoying how, <clears throat> how much City was pulling and grabbing. I mean, a physical game is one thing, but they were being assholes. Yeah, that, yeah. that um, I don't know how, like, because I watch the game, but I also listen to, like, Sky Sports and I... I You know, I do a lot of, like, the Premier League uh, like podcasts how, and stuff. How didn't they... Uh, well, the thing is... The Haaland... The, yeah, the thing is, the ref, he said... He went to the um, assistant coaches before the game, and he's like, I'm going to let... I'm going to let play let on. Let them play, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to let them play. I'm not going to call in everything. That's what I'm going to do. So both Pep and Klopp were like, okay, that's how you're going to, you know... That's how you're going to dictate the game. And it's sad because the game changer literally was the goal, was the city goal, um, where it was a foul. Like it was, it's clearly a foul hmm. that, that if that happened in the penalty, in, in like the penalty box, that's a penalty. Oh, 100%, like a hundred percent. You can't pull anyone like that. You can't pull their Jersey like that. But because the players had been playing like that for so long, They were like, yeah, that's is the game. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just high energy game, like a lot of contact. Yeah, but I think that one thing is to let them play. Other yeah, thing is to get to that point. Yeah, but I can understand. Because it's like a very thin line. I can understand why people would be upset, especially if if the um, if this idiot referee, like, I don't like that ref. But if he says, hey, it's going to be play on, like, stop, like, don't complain. Don't come complaining to me. It's going to be play on. And suddenly you don't, you haven't whistled any of those. And then you decide to whistle that one. I can totally understand why, you know, city fans and the city and, and Pep, like everyone's going to be upset because it doesn't seem consistent. To me, it's a foul like every day of the week. But what players usually hate is it like inconsistency. But then to whistle that one and say, no, 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 like those are going to be fouls. And then to not whistle the Bernardo Silva that just like yeah. power slams like yeah. that that looked like wrestling. Um, Mo Salah, 
Like it's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's craziness. Yeah. Crazy. So yeah, but it was just it felt like those games are the reason that I fell in love with Liverpool so many years ago. Because you just it's like a final, you know, they could be playing anyone and it's like this is last game of my life. It just feels like that. It's a, it's incredible. So Tom Thumb. Oh Tom. I don't understand. Because it says Milner R B. Millie, right back. Okay. Yeah. And a skull emoji. Yeah. And then and then they said. And then dot dot dot. Yeah. M O T M. Man of the match. So, oh, because I I'm sorry, I was lost because I have worry. no idea no, about no, the no, that's all, like that's, little that's shortcut. Me, I, I can help you out. But help Millie, me out, you Tom. I mean, I'm a Colombian. Yeah, I have but no Millie, idea what R B M O T M. Yeah, Millie <laughs> is 37. He's pretty much my age. Like, yeah. let's call him my age. He's an amazing professional. He's incredible. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, when he's had to play um, right back. Mm-hmm. He never gets like a lot of support, and there was, you know, there were games that, you know, what it because he didn't start, and because the teams were like pushing forward, it was very weird. You know what it was? He he had a great game because he only had to deal with Foden. Mm-hmm. I have no idea why. Well, Cancelo was playing on the other side, but he usually plays uh, on that on that side. I don't know why he why Pep wouldn't put. Noticing that Mill, like Millie, was here and Joe Gomez was um, was the uh, center back right next to him. Like, how do you not put like uh, Foden and Cancelo? Like, they would have run past Milner a thousand times, but they didn't. And he had he made Foden, which is playing incredible. That kid can play. He's but, he's amazing. Mm, but he wasn't playing. Oh, he he had a horrible game. Yeah, he had a terrible. You're saying he was playing. He's playing. Oh, no, amazing? he's been playing. Foden yeah. has been amazing. But last match, yeah, no. Millie just... And I'm so happy that he was bad. In yeah, that oh match. yeah, I was super... I thought he was going to have like, uh, you know, like score two, three goals. Like, mm-hmm. it, like I was like, oh my God, another hat trick for this yeah, kid. Yeah, but, but thumbs right. Because I mean, I was so... I was very worried when I saw that Milner was going to play there. Oh, everyone, don't worry. But then I was so happy. I mean, because I, I, I don't know how it would have been if it was Trent. Well, because I know that Trent always like goes up and leaves like that hole and everyone knows that they can attack by that side because Trent's not there. Yeah, maybe. So that's what, I think that's may- very good. Maybe that could help Klopp realize that. I have the move no idea what he's to- going to do. I think he has to rest Milner. I think he can't just be like, um, you know, he's going to be a right back from from now mm. until the end of the season. No, but, no. But, I, but I'm talking about like the lineup. Because yeah. I do think that it's not working for him to have Simicas or Robertson and Trent in the other side. And they just go up and they just leave those two holes. So then in the back, you just have two players. Because it's wish... always like Matip and Van Dijk alone. Yeah. And of course, if the other uh, team is attacking, they're going to find their way. Because if there's only two people as defenders, there's like plenty of room to go and score a goal. So I don't think that that lineup is working. I I actually wish that he would play like um, City plays. That's my deep wish. Mm-hmm. That we can play Joe, Konate, and um, Verge. Three at the back. And then just have like Robertson and and, um, and uh, Trent as wingers. Like who... like. Then just use everyone else to as attack. Did everyone you say else. Verge? Verge. Yeah, big <laughs> Verge. Yeah, just use all of them as, as attacking players. Come on. We mm-hmm. could do that. We can. So. Anyways, yeah. That was our Liverpool minute. Mm, Up the Reds. Let's see. Thank you. Good night. Rosaline Dion was saying, ha ha ha, Stephanie. LOL. And Stephanie was saying, so did your parents ever consider a different name for you? My mom originally wanted me to, wanted to name me Bonnie. But Thankfully, Bonnie. Okay. my father disagreed. Ha ha ha. So for me, it was Valentina. Oh. So I was going to be Valentina. I think I was Maria Paula or Paula, something like, if I would have been a girl. Because my mother, 
you know, I'm from a time that um, they didn't know. The like, gender. you only knew the gender of the baby when it was born. Like, that's when, <laughs> oh, it's a boy. Like, look at his penis. It's a boy. But, um, yeah. So, my mother would pick, like, boy's name, girl's name. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I, I would have been Paula. If I'm, yeah, I think so. I think I've always heard that. I have to check with my mom. No, but I think me, I've, I've always heard that. Which Paula would have been like a terrible Paula, I feel. No. Yeah, I think so. I don't like that name that much. Mm, and what about Valentina for me? That's a popular name. Really? So not, it's that, a nice name. not as popular as Daniela. Well, yeah. But I think of kids' name born around your time, I think it was getting popular. No, you know it like wasn't. Like my name was not popular and then suddenly it became like super popular. Yeah, but I think that Valentina became popular afterwards. Like I think about like lots of generations after, even babies nowadays. Valentina yeah, that's a, is that's more a, that's popular. A, that's a, a name that people are uh, want. Yeah, but at my time, I even remember the people I studied with. Yeah. I think there was one Valentina. Oh, really? And there were like... 10, 12 Danielas. Yeah. So, or more. Uh, Tom Thumb, Jordan was Tom saying... Tom Thumb. Nico's best friends with Virgil. He can call him Verge. Big Verge, yeah. Rosalind was saying, Valentina is very pretty. Yeah, it was It was pretty. It's I like a vixen name, though. I wouldn't mind it. I think it has some evil in it. So I don't think it suits you. Ba Valentina has I an evil? I think so. I think so. I think so. I don't know why I think so. Well, not quite Valeria, but mm -hmm. but it's close enough for me because Valeria sounds evil, absolutely evil. Like she she will make a mess of you. Um, <laughs> okay. But Valentina is evil enough, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, let's see. Uh... Diana Gaming was saying love Nicolas because he just don't draw but also carry the viewers with the vision anal analysis and deep knowledge behind the behind and beyond the paintings their history and everything possible to make it best and some heart emojis and the football mm. Jimmy Reyes was saying crisscross applesauce. And Christy Mullen was saying crisscross applesauce. I tell my first graders to sit that way on the carpet. Yeah. My, I've that's never how heard you that call in it. my life. Well, I think that's never. how kids call it. But it is a thing. I mean, I wasn't making it up. No, no. That's weirdly specific for you to make up. Crisscross applesauce? Yeah. And it sounds like a thing. Like, as soon as you said it, I started like, wait, that has a name? Um, Diana Gaming was saying, as long as there's a Valentine's Day, the name Valentina will always be pop. LOL. Well, but I think here in Colombia, because we don't have we don't have Valentine's Day, so I think yeah, it's not as associated with that. I mean, it's not associated with that at all. No. But maybe in, in the U.S., because I don't know if it's popular in the U.S. I don't think it's popular. Valentina? Popular. No, that sounds like very Italian-American, you know. Valentine? No, that sounds like Clementine. Valentine, too. Well, I don't know. No, Clementine is like a cow's name. Clementine no es la fruta? The fruit? Yeah, but it's a name. Yeah, I know. But not a cow, Nicolás. It's a cow's name, yeah. No. Mm. Opik was saying hello. Hello, Opik. How are you? Let's see. Ok. 
can't tell what I'm from here down. I can't tell what I'm drawing. You can go back if you want to. No, but I can let you know until. Where, no, but that won't can, make that. No, won't make trust a me, you can go difference. back a lot. A lot. I a like lot. it a lot. A lot. Really? Don't you want to try? Um. No. Let's let's do this. Okay. Thank you, Danny. No. Then thank you. Uh, drawings and crafts was saying unique tattoos. Oh, they're my children's drawings. Yeah, this, I mean, I could say much more, but they're just my children's drawings. It's it's, it's easy to understand. Victor the, the low, go ahead. Only thing I have tattooed. Just all of them are my children's drawings. Victor de la Cruz was saying, what's the reason behind the paper you're using? Um, I like it. I think it's a really good multimedia paper. And um, I started using it a um, couple of years ago. I guess around six years ago, I had used it to draw as you usually use the um, Moleskine sketchbooks. You know, you kind of draw on them. Always inspired by James Jean and his amazing use of um, of the sketchbooks, sketchbooks yeah. yeah. And um, knowing how much you could push, you know, the uh, the paper as a substrate, I I always thought, okay, let's start to paint on this. Uh, but I wasn't the only. I mean, there's tons of people. There's even like a a show that I don't think they're doing anymore. The, that was yeah, the Moleskine Project, yeah. I think. Is it that's what it's called? I think that was the name. Yeah. Well, not it's not. I don't even think it's. I don't even know if it's sponsored by Molesking or anything. But I think it was like, hey, you got to do uh uh on a spread like on a particular spread of the the sketchbook. You have to do a uh, drawing, painting, whatever you want. Um, but yeah, and it was all on Molesking, and I was actually going to participate mm -hmm. uh, on that show with your um. Your painting, the sneezing painting. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. And then I, I bowed out. I said, "No, I'm sorry, I can't. Um, I can't do it. I, I think I, I made something up, an excuse or something, which I feel bad about, but I'll come clean right now." But it's this one, no? Um, yeah. Where is that show though? It was it at uh at um where I showed um Nucleus. I think Nucleus is is the one that held that show. Well, it says the annual Moleskine Project, a collective exhibition of artists' sketchbooks from around the world. No, no, but well, at maybe Spoke San Francisco. Spoke maybe it, it started was Spoke at Spoke San Francisco in 2011. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I know the, the artist that started. Yeah, but the Moleskine Project. It's right, called. right, right, right. I don't know if they they were able to keep doing it after or through pandemic. I don't think there was a show. I don't remember them there being a show those years. Mm. I don't think so. Liad was saying it's a shame that they don't sell the moleskin paper as sheets. Oh, they should. Bastards. Although I, I do like the um, the acknowledgement that it comes from, you know, a book. It's okay. It's a thing, I guess. Steve Weed was saying, so love the deliberate drawing, Nick. Wow, blows my mind. Thank you, Steve. So kind. Cody Winicky was saying, I had a dog named Valentine. 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 Rest in peace. Oh. Um... I'm sure he was. What dog was it? I want to know. And yeah, rest in peace. Mm. Opik was saying, "Do you guys do a digital painting?" Um, no, no, no. I painted digitally, but I don't. I'm not even close to knowing enough about. Like if I if I paint on Photoshop, I'll just paint on one layer of Photoshop. Like it's gonna be the barest form of digital painting that you'll ever see. So I 
I don't even know how to take advantage of uh, of Photoshop as a tool. Um, so yeah, so the the little that I've done, which I I've, I've spoken about this, like I did um, backgrounds for uh, an animated short. I did a bunch of backgrounds for that short. Um, but I would say that's very limited experience because, like I said, I uh, I would do all of the painting as if it was like a regular painting. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would do was I had a layer of um, like a, a stained, like a you know, pe like a texture of linen or or whatever cloth, whatever that had like a a washy ground over it. And I would put that as my my uh, background, and then I would paint on top of it on a layer. But I would p do all my painting on a single layer, everything, every single thing on a single layer. Because the way I understand painting is that everything sort of um, impacts everything else. Like what I do here impacts what's right next to it, what's right next to it, what's right next to it. So for me, it's super difficult to like visualize a painting in like, okay, I'm going to do my foreground and I just do that layer and I paint this and then I'm going to do this other thing here and then I'm going to do my sky. And um, and I remember the first time um, they made adjustments on one of the backgrounds and they were like, oh, could you you know, can you change the sky? Let's change it to, you know, a, another type of blue or like something like that. I forget what it was. I think they had pitched me like a certain time of day. And when they saw it, they were like, which I mean, I don't like these changes. But when they saw it, they were like, hey, could we do this like lighter? Like, let's do like a lighter sky. Let's make it a little bit later in terms of the time. And I was like, okay. But then I said, and they were like, how, how quickly can you do that? And I was like, give me maybe late in the afternoon or end of the day. And they were like, what? No. And I was like, what do you mean? I have to repaint everything. Like all the all my relationships are off. Like I can't just change a color. It's going to have to change everything. <laughs> and it's like, no, no, no. Just take your sky layer and just do, you know. And they were like, you could do like a command balance thing and just shift the color and then just do a repaint like super quickly. It, it should take you like half an hour at most. And I was like, what? And I was like, what do you mean a sky layer? What are you talking about? And I, I told them like, oh, dude, it's one layer. I paint everything in one layer. And they were like, no, what? <laughs> so I remember I had to like push myself to, to now, you know, paint on like different layers um, when I was doing the uh, rest of the backgrounds. But it would go against every grain in my body. Like every everything I knew about painting, I was like, I have to forget it. I have to like cut things out because everything in me says that painting has to relate. So it was super, super hard for me to, um, to paint that way. But I did paint. Uh, I did everything on, on Photoshop. And like a tiny little um, Wacom tablet, like a bamboo tablet. So it was it was super funny because the the backgrounds had to be huge, and my ta my uh, tablet was about that size. So um, it was it was super funny. I just remember buying like saying yes to that job just because I wanted to try it out, never having done it before. And then going to, um, you know where I bought it? At Panamericana. I went to Panamericana. Yeah, and I was Wacom? like, yeah. And I was like, I'm going to buy this one. I mean, and they were expensive. I mean, yeah, they they're were, still expensive. Yeah, because I, I have one. I think I have the same one you have. You have but like a newer, a newer version, version of that. Yeah, yeah. You, mine was like bare bones. Because I bought it when I was studying and it was like, I thought it was expensive. Of course, it was like the, from the cheap, for uh versions that they had yeah because they have like ones that are super oh yeah no like, no pro and expensive but it was expensive for me it was expensive yeah too. for me too i was like i, remember, oh my I was God, in, i, have I to was buy like this yeah i was like can't i mouse this i was like maybe i can mouse this thing and no 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 mm. liad was saying i used to paint digitally digitally exclusively nicolas if you ever have if you ever need to paint digitally again, feel free to reach out. 
if you want help with the tech. Oh, thank you, Leah. Very, very much. Thank you. Opik was saying, so basically, it's just traditional painting on the computer screen. Mine? Yes, mine were 100% that. Cody Winicky was saying, she was a blue healer slash pit mix. I got her at a gas station for $10. She was the best dog ever, and she died an of old age in my arms in the beginning of COVID. Oh, that's oh, Cody, sad. Cody, that's so sad. Yeah, that's very sad. Yeah. How old was she? She He said it. No. Yeah. She died of old age. Oh, well. Old age. But that's going to be 12 years. Mm. Rosaline Dion was saying, Danny, have you been painting or drawing or sculpting lately? Yes, I have. This morning I was sculpting. I was carving. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I've been working on it. As I said uh, last week, I think I was talking about that. I was having a hard time with some woods I bought. So, I felt like I was going in circles because I was like sculpting. And then I got to a knot and it just like break. It broke. So I had to start again, and then it broke, and then I had to start again, and then it broke. <laughs> so now I'm Great starting story. one, and I know that this one's going to be the one. Um, like I'm being super methodic, because I'm super gentle when I carve. So I've never had carvings break uh, before. So... I just think it was a weird, like it, from the beginning, I knew that it was a weird wood. Mm. Like it wasn't the best wood, the pack that I opened, because it was like a brand new pack. So, uh, Cody Winicky was saying she was 15. Oof. So pretty, so pretty old as far as dogs go. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's very old. Well, but I'm happy that you got to spend so many years. Uh, with her, Cody. Steve Wheat was saying, I love how you pay as much attention to small areas as you do to the point and in parentheses area of interest. So much pa patience shows how much you love the process. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm finding my way also. So it's process slash finding my way. Liette was saying, Danny, can I send you a link on Instagram so you can see my digital paintings? Oh, oh please, I want to see please. that. Yes. Please do. And let me know when you do so I can check the phone. Let me see if I... Um... Nicolas, you're showing your phone. Yeah. You're showing my photo. Oh, sure. The phone. Let me see if I... Um... So sad that you can't get that short. I've I've spoken about this. Can't get it anywhere. Can't find it. Seven point one. What? The uh the um the uh what do you call that? The IMDb score. That's not bad for an animated short. I painted all of this. I even did the logo. Do you know that? I even did that. What? I can't see. What logo? Well, this. It's all, all of this. I oh, did. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the poster. Yeah, yeah. But the, yeah. the letter, the oh. title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah, did oh, it. Oh, I so. like that. Yeah, which they had and me can't do you... more things than I thought I was like capable of doing or... Mm. Can you like uh look for it? Well, there's a trailer, a very old trailer. Oh, maybe if you send it to your uh mail, I can post it here so people yeah. can see it. So people can see this. Uh Yeah, so just see. copy share. here yeah to your mail. Email? The um oh, the regular the one. See, no. Dale. 
Okay. So yeah, so people can see that. Oh, what happened here? So, let's see. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to share the link for the um, animated short. See. There it is. So Liad was saying, Danny, I sent you the link. So let's see it. Check it out. Mm. I opened my Instagram and I saw. What did you see? Like a super like stuffed cookie with chunks of chocolate. Oh. It looks so good. Yeah, we don't do cookies here. Well, no, but I would lately do that. We've been doing like like uh, healthy cookies, but oh, but I would do that cookie. That's not a health. Yeah, good cookies are sometimes not the healthy kind. No, but the one we're eating is good and healthy. Whoa. Oh, it is good and it healthy. It is good. It is good. Yeah. So let me. I'm gonna open the link so we can see it together. So I'm gonna uh, move to the side a bit so we can both see it. I'm just telling everyone. All right. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that dude? Is that Junkrat or something? Let me see. Let me zoom. Could you zoom in that one? Oh, yeah. I think that's Junkrat. Because that's the trap. Yeah. That was my main in Overwatch. Oh, these are cool. Stephen Colbert, yeah. Very cool, Liat. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, they're very cool. I like them. I haven't seen that work of yours, Liat. Steve Weed was saying, are you and Danny planning to have a show in the States? Would love to see and meet you too. Um, <laughs> that's so sweet, Steve. No, not a show. No, per se. Um, uh, we could eventually. I think we could eventually plan some sort of like a meet and greet, like a very low key meet and greet. Um, you know, if it when we're, I don't know where we would be if we were to travel. So which state we would be right now, we're going to uh, Houston, to Texas, because um, that's where we're going to take care of uh, shipping. Yes. But uh, but yeah, eventually it would be nice to to have something like that. Mm, Brandon Monsi was saying, hi, Daniel Nicolas. I was wondering if you had any advice regarding the use of transparent areas in a painting. Um, Transparent well, areas, as in leaving the surface, surface of the paper, or like the, like the surface shine through. Or are you are you talking like or um, like super thinned? Yeah, thin down paint where you yeah. can see like your ground, and which we would usually associate for shadows. Let's say so, very baroque ish, kind of type of painting. So, if you are going to do that, you have to leave usually. So so for, um. And I think this is, I mean, it was it was also in High Renaissance, but for Baroque painting, because High Renaissance also had, like it had some sort of like direct painting, if you think of like late Titian, for example, but late Titian, late Titian is very weird. Um, I mean, it's very atemporal. Um, so for Baroque painting, mm, what you would usually see, and think of like Rubens, think of Van Dyck, think of Rembrandt. So yeah, you know, Flemish Dutch paint. But if you also think of like um, El Greco, for example, or even like uh, Velázquez, although Velázquez was like a, more of like a painter, painter, like he would paint anything. Mm -hmm. But if you think of, Fle of Flemish, Dutch, some Italian painting for sure also, um, what they started doing was like understanding the, the this kind of, almost new or embracing this new ability to speak about roundness, you know, to speak about um, the the way an object would occupy space. So 
they instinctively noticed something that was really amazing. And it is that light um, actually speaks about, uh, has the responsibility to speak about volume. So light. So light is the one that helps us understand three-dimensionality. And I say us because, you know, we are the ones that are perceiving it and that's how our vision is, is sort of constructed. And so it's because of light that we understand that something, if, if we are solely thinking about visual stimulus, um, but if we construct an idea of three-dimensionality through visual stimulus, it's because of light. It's entirely because of light. Entirely. Like 100%. Like 100%. And I know that some people can say, well, you know, it's relative, like light and shadow. When we say light, we also kind of recognize the existence of the absence of light, which we call shadow. But in truth is that we know that things are round and we know that things occupy space. We know that things turn in space and are three-dimensional because of light, solely because of light. So that is a physical truth. That, that, that is like a physical um, sort of a fundamental fact of the way we construct the idea of three-dimensionality, we human beings. And what Baroque painters did, which was super intelligent and, you know, they are incredible for, for, not, for doing this, is that they started to associate the, you know, the um, kind of sculptural quality of paint to that notion of light being um, the responsible um, uh, factor for us understanding volume. So what they, what they ended up doing is putting more paint in light. So what that equated to was like, I'm going to flesh out my lights. I'm going to put a lot of paint in my lights. I'm going to model my lights. Like, you know, plop, 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 like flake white, flake white, lead white in all of my lights. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to leave my shadow untouched or I'm going to touch it as, as least as I can. You know, the bare minimum, bare minimum. So that was super important. And what's amazing was that there's a ton of paintings that are so, so like... It's almost like a treaty on, 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 you know, how to model form when you look at those, those paintings. When you look at a great Van Dyck or a great Rubens, a great Rembrandt, and you see how they, they not only would leave these transparent parts like, you know, almost like nothing, nothing there, but how they transition towards that light. So it usually meant that this little area, this transitional area between light and shade would be like a neutral so sometimes it would be like a green gray or it would be like um like a bluish gray, like a blue gray. And um I don't know if you guys do gray with A or gray with E. I do it with an A. I yeah, it could be both actually. I think um one is older than the other. One is more in mis in misuse, mis I think the one with the A. Yeah. Um <laughs> but um the the transitional areas for me were amazing. You know, they were these pretty much like black and white, literally that it was black and white or it was like um, black ochre or like a yellow and white to make it a little bit greener. And then it was just a lot of paint to, to flesh out uh, what was going to be the uh, the mass of of that form that was coming into um, light. Um, and, you know, you would think that that's a very simple thing to do, but it's actually not that simple to do it with such clarity as they did because it requires this to be so, so like your drawing has to be spot on and you have to, you know, leave these little areas, um, these air, these shadow areas, uh, sometimes untouched or sometimes like barely, you know, they would barely change like the hue. So maybe if it was neutral, they would make it a little bit warmer, a little bit more orange. Or maybe it um, it was reflecting reflecting a little bit of light, so they would paint some of that lightness in, in, into that shadow. But it was just nothing. It was so so economical. It was so so intelligent that I think that that's the hardest part of that type of painting: the fact that to do it beautifully, you have to like be incredibly well um, knowledgeable of what you're doing with your drawing, with your initial drawing. And 
it's almost like every little stroke counts when you are painting that shadow mass because you can't go past a certain point. You know, as soon as you know that you've um, ruined it and you have to paint on it, you have to paint the shadow, it's, it becomes something different. Now, having said that, Sargent says that using transparent ground um, to speak about the transparent nature of something is like cheating. He, he would say, you have to paint this and paint this and paint this, like paint all of it, all of it, mix it and paint it, mix something transparent, but don't let your um, substrate or, or, you know, these veils of ground and, and, and very transparent underpaintings be um, the, the, the shortcut for speaking about transparency. He would say, no, that's cheating. You have to paint it. So in a way, it's almost like there's Team Rembrandt and Team Sargent. And you you pick the side. I already know which side I'm in. But um Well, but both are win win. I mean I think you yeah. could It's uh Liverpool and Manchester City. So I'm Team Liverpool, Team Rembrandt. Mm hmm Uh Mitch Mo Mo Rouser was saying hi from New Mexico. Hey, New Mitch. here, but a long time fan. Oh, I remember awesome. printing off Nicolas' work and taking it to my university painting classes for inspiration circa 2006. What? Oh, Ooh. so long, long time thank fan. Thank you so much. Yeah. I don't know which work is that, but thank you. And, if you remember, let me know. And great to have you here because they were saying they're new here. So awesome. Mm. Opik was saying, have you tried painting a landscape? I have, I have. I'm not super good at it, but I have. I've tried. <laughs> tried. Yeah, but I'm not a great landscape landscape painter. I mean, I, I also have to be honest about that. Oh my god, if you if you want to look, I mean, Peter Brown, Pete the Street. Yeah, amazing. Crazy. Oh, Danny, I've been looking at this this guy, this other British artist. And you haven't shared it with me? I mean, it's my little treasure. But uh, Rob Pointon. Oh, my God. Searching right now. Give me one Oh, sec. he painted. He did a, a come bunch on, of come paintings. Come Rob Pointon. So Rob. literally how it sounds. Point on. Point. Rob Pointon. Pointon. Rob Pointon. Rob Pointon. Yeah. I don't even believe that he paints from life. Like, it is so crazy what he does from life. Oh, yeah. He was painting, like, the, the queen's funeral and, and all the procession for, with the horses yeah, and I'm stuff. I'm seeing it. And I was like, "How, so dude, good. you're not painting this from life. Like, this is, this is, like, you know, old, old, good, old, old, like, old, great painting good. Yeah, like proper old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, I was and like, this I is I mean, not... I'm sorry, but this is like crazy. It's a post of uh, Rob Point. Yeah. And Pete the Streets yeah. comments. Yeah, of course. You legend, Rob. Yeah. I mean, they are both the best, I feel, right yeah. now. Oh, my God. And you can see that. Look. I mean. Yeah, no, it's not right. It's not right. Crazy no. good. No, no, it's not right. It is so not right, like, it, to be that good. So there are people that are that good. I, I have to say... At plein air. Yeah, but, but, but maybe they were asking about, like, landscapes in general, because I think that you can be a landscape painter without being a plein air painting. Um, yeah, sure, sure. I mean, I, there's a lot of cross... Well, but it's like... No, I get it, but it's like painting a portrait and painting a model from like real life you're still painting a portrait and right. if you're painting a landscape and you paint a picture of a landscape you're but still painting I a landscape i think the intersect is high i would say yeah i would say there's a lot of or what you were saying like if if you're a figurative painter chances are you've painted from life in my case i did paint from life for years and years and years and i still do like I'll, you know almost 100% of my workshops are from life so um there is an there, there there's an intersect there but yeah, Rob point on like Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. It is it is not right to be that good. 
like whenever you see somebody do something that it ju- you just can't explain, you're just like, how do you like, that's not real. You, you don't paint like that from life. You can't paint those things from life. That's craziness. And they do it. That's when you realize, oh, this is my little brain speaking. Like, I just don't understand how good people can be. But he's tremendous. Tremendous. When you were talking about Team Rembrandt, Team Sergeant. Team Sergeant. Cody Winicky was saying, and then there is me in the middle of the two agreeing with both. Haha. <laughs> It's not as simple as siding with Liverpool. Yeah, Team Rembrandt. <laughs> no, that sounded team like Sam Rembrandt. Bent. Team no. Sambant. Sar- Sergeant. That sounded worse. That sounded eh. like a bad pronunciation of Sergeant. It has to be Team Rembrandt. Well, the good thing Rembrandt? is that Rembrandt. Rembrandt? Rembrandt. Or Sarbrandt. Sarbrandt. <laughs> Sarbrandt. Sarbrandt. Uh, Rosalind was saying Rembrandt is a never ending gift. And Pit the Street is crazy good. Oh. Yeah. Rosalind was saying Rem Sarge. <laughs> But Rosalind, if you've never checked Rob Poynton, oh my God. Yeah. C- Please. I look don't at know his. why you haven't shared it with me because it's just... so good. I mean, so good, so so good. Let me have my things. No, let not me, with let art. Let me have my little treasures. No, not with art. You can have whatever, but please share good artists with me, as I do with you. Oh my god, I I share with you all of it. Yeah, no, you betrayed me with this gem of an artist. Well, you could But, say that I'm doing it right now, so no, I'm no, not. no, no, Nicolas, I'm joking, of course. I don't care. You're right. I was like, Nicolas, sleeping on the floor tonight. You. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brandon Monsey was With saying... With the picture of the dog. Brandon Monsey was saying, thanks a lot. That is very helpful. I'm also curious about your thinking process when you leave your ground showing through. If it's different from the Baroque idea you described. Oh, when do I leave my ground? Mm. I don't do it super often, I have to be honest. Mm. I mean, I'm team Rembrandt, but I don't think I paint like Rembrandt. I don't think anyone does. Um, well, but for example, th- this painting. one, I was trying to show an example. Oh, a little bit of Fares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the one of it's, still, it's still with Fer. shadow. It still has to do a little bit with shadow, so for I'm sure. I'm trying to think which one else. Because, for example, in this one... A little bit of the hair. But yeah. The hair, like the ground matched the color, so I was, you know, that one was easy. Yeah, but it's not like you are following... No, that one, there's almost nothing. Really. Like this little part? Yeah, a tiny bit. Mm, maybe here? Yeah, well... Fair here a bit? Be, a little bit, tiny bit, but I tend to paint a lot of it, so... Mm. I'm thinking about it. Maybe the fed, fed with one of the sheet, of the uh, bed sheet, or the uh, cover? This one? Yeah, that one had a lot of the ground. Well, well, not a lot. A lot, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, but it's usually uh, transparent areas of the shadow. Like, I try to cheat in those. Not cheat. It actually, I do it because I think it, it, it accentuates the beautiful range between thin, you know, the it, it's almost like, um, um, I don't know, if you're constructing with words, like like the language that you have suddenly is expanded because you're showing what happens to those um, words when they are very thin and to those words when they're very thick. So it almost broadens that vocabulary. I like that. I like when a painting can show a lot of that. Um, but I think for, for example, if, if you're teaching painting, it's actually like a good idea to be team sergeant and to tell people, paint everything. Just mix everything, paint everything. Um, yeah, but I'm such a weird painter from painting to painting that I change a lot of stuff that I, I mean, it doesn't, I don't change what I believe in, but, but I do, I, I don't know. I shift, I shift a lot. I feel. Mm, Samuel Coomer was saying, just did my first planner today and it rough. Oh, Getting it's the hang tough. of yeah. how to handle strokes in the moment. And it's hard. Timely discussion. Haha. <laughs> yeah. It's very tough. I get it. I just, for me, it's uh, like when we, when we did, um, uh, Menorca mm-hmm. this year, I did a bunch of plain air. So I, I think of it as painting, to be honest. It is, it's just, it is painting. What makes it super difficult for me 
I feel it's um it's not the painting part. It's not even like chasing the light because we were painting sunlight, which made it super tough. Yeah, but chasing sometimes is is hard, and I would say it's hard for people, for example, like me, that do not establish super quickly the whole of the painting. Mm. So I do find myself chasing things. Yeah, but I do think that because I did two uh, little like. Uh, gouache paintings, yeah. Gouache paintings, yeah, in Menorca. And one, I was like not chasing it, but then I was like in a field of flowers. Yeah. And everything was shifting so much and I started shifting it and I was like, you know what, I'm having fun like talking about the different like changes everywhere. So I was I was like trying to chase it, but intentionally, so okay, that was that's cool. Okay, that's, that's pretty nice. Because that was cool because I was like, it's always going to win me because oh, I yeah. know that I'm a slow painter. No, oh, no, no. So we, I might we as well move faster than nature. Yeah, but I was like, so I might as well just have fun trying to chase it in my own way. Yeah. So just like trying to describe the part that I was trying to chase. So again, I don't know if it's like an intelligent uh, way to approach planner painting or an efficient one, but. I had fun. I think you ended up embracing it in a more conceptual manner, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's sometimes how I approach many things. Yeah, yeah, because because it's not super easy to just embrace that and say, I'm just going to flow with the different like states of, of this painting. Mm -hmm. um, I think for a lot of people, it's just this desperation that comes from the you know trying to paint shadow shapes and if and if you build your painting upon certain shadow shapes and then you realize they're moving because mm. they're making they're either getting smaller or bigger and you get super anxious about it because now you feel like everything is changing and you have to change like yeah. you're obligated to make changes and changes and changes no and i was there yeah it it makes it super tough for people yeah. super super tough so it's um what i would say it's like the most beautiful thing about um, uh, painting plain air uh, is recognizing things that can remain not quite the same. Like it's not that it's not as if they're just static because nothing is static, but they are the things that are going to be your constant. Your let, let's put quotations on those things. And there's other things that are just going to be super ephemeral and the idea is to feel okay, like to take a breather, painting those things that remain constant and to be super active. Like our brain has to be a million miles an hour when we are painting the things that are very ephemeral, like brushstroke, brushstroke, done. Like go to your palette, mix, try to mix exactly what you want, what you're looking for, mm -hmm. put it down and let it go. Like stop and mm -hmm. keep keep going. You can't go back to it. You can't just go back and back and back and back because that's that's never going to work in a painting like that. So I think it's a beautiful way of learning how to move through a painting and how to recognize shifts in nature, natural shifts in nature. Mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I, I mean, it's one of those things that I, if I didn't love painting people so much, when I see, when I see um, Point On, doing those paintings, I'm like, how could you not want to paint like that your whole life? Like, mm. it's it looks so amazing. It, it feels so, so incredible to just say, that's the sort of painter that I want to be. Like, that's, yes, that is painting. That's like real painting. Um, but I, I always feel like you don't have to be every single painter at a time. Like, Every single great thing about painting at the single time, you don't have to be that. Like, hmm. it's okay to just be your painter, like be the painter that you can be and that's it. But you don't have to shine making every single... It's like, hey, do you also draw animals? And yes, of course, I can draw animals. Oh, have you ever done um, um, landscape painting? I can draw the most <laughs> amazing like natural landscapes. Oh, but have you done like urban landscape? And hell yeah, I've done like urban landscape. Yeah. Oh my God, but you've never painted cars. I studied design. Yes, I can do cars. Like, 
no, you come on. Like, it's okay saying like, oh no, dude, that's tough. Like I'm, I'm super happy doing, I'm not like content. I'm not, it's not as if I'm sleeping, but I'm, you know, I'm very happy doing this thing that I love to do. And, um, I'll take opportunities to challenge myself when confronted with this other type of painting, but I'm clearly not that sort of painter, you know? Mm. So that's what I say in, you know, when people ask me about No, and it makes sense. I think that in my case, the thing that happened is that I was getting frustrated. Also, it was gouache. So I was changing, like I was painting and then it dried and it changed even more Mm -hmm. to what I was doing. So I realized, you know what, it's just, I'm just going to do this tiny exercise and I'm going to enjoy the fact that sometimes I just see a part that I've already established, but I'm more attracted to what I'm seeing right now. So I'm going to adjust that. So that's what I mean with yeah, like chasing because I was chasing in that case and I had fun, but I had fun because I struggled so bad that I was like, no, I hate this. This is terrible. I had fun because I hate this. No, no, no. But then I was like, I, but, I mean, I'm in a very cool setup. Why can't I just like enjoy yeah. what I'm seeing? And if I want to chase this thing, I'm going to chase it. It's not like I'm going to be like in a contest with this. I know it's just like a tiny exercise and it's my first like plein air exercise. So I might as well have fun. And I did have a lot of fun. I it's don't know if you cool. remember that I was like yeah. in my little chair and then a turtle popped up. And then painting was over. The painting was over. I was like crying. I was like calling all the people to run outside of the <laughs> of the um, uh, workshop to look at the turtle. Then the turtle was gone. Yeah. Then we found another turtle. It's a fast motherfucker. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Mm, Hector mm. was saying, Hey guys, I'm enjoying your thoughts on landscape and planar painting. I like Peter Van Dyke and fellow Wisconsin painter Bethan Moran Hanslick. She is a beast of an artist. Oh, Bethan. I love is, her. Yeah. Yeah. Fast mesh. Yeah, she's so good. Forget it. I'm so happy to How be. How good is she? Like, we should take time. How good is she? Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ, she's good. I was going to say, I'm so happy to have a piece that she did and I was so happy when I asked her because I wanted to buy the piece and she was like yeah I could send it but Danny can we do like an exchange and I usually don't do that but I was like what of course you can so the carving that I'm doing is for her she is so talented and she was so sweet because she sent she was like well I asked and they were going to charge me even if I sent only the painting or more stuff. So I just like embroidered a sh- uh, shirt for you. Oh, she sent she like goodies, that. like a batch of goodies. She sent like candies for Samu and Fer. Yeah, no, and she's, she's crazy I, generous. I stole one. Yeah, she's amazing. She, yeah, like she sent it so many things. She's yeah, so but, kind. But it's... And it's, crazy talented. Oh like, my God. And like in the format that she does... Oh, she can do like an enormous painting of her backyard. Because it's like humongous plein air. Yeah. Which, by the way, the little study that I was talking about, the gouache study, it was something like this. And I'm not kidding because it was like in a little moleskin and I did like a little square. And I was painting there and struggling there. And she has like these huge things, like huge canvases. Yeah. And it's she's just crazy good. By the way, Hector, you're very good too. I really like oh, your he's great. yeah. I really really like your yeah. Hector Planier account. Really good. Really really good. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And Peter Van Dyke. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh my God, he's good. Yeah. Hector was saying, "Well, that's awesome. Can't wait to see your trades. She's an amazing artist and person. Yeah, she was so sweet. Fellow Wisconsinian." Wisconsin. Wisconsinian? I don't even know how to say it, people in Wisconsin. Maybe. Mm. How, what is the direct translation of gentilicio, Danny? Could you look? Gentilis. 
Gentil is. Gentil, gentilesque. <laughs> eh, a ver. Demonim? What? Demonim? Okay, like, well, it makes sense. Like, Demonim? Well, demograph yeah, yeah. Is like... Or gently, gentilis. Oh, oh pues, so it's, sea, it is gentilis. Pues termina en C. No sé cómo decirlo. Gentilic? What? The gentilic? O sea, G-E-N-T-I-L-I-C. Oh, gentilic. Yeah. Okay. Demonim? So that's... Demonim? Sí, demonim or gentilic. Okay, I don't, but I think like... Demonim? I don't know if... Wisconsin. Regular English speakers... Wisconsin it. Wisconsin it? Wisconsin it. Oh my God. I'm a consummate Wisconsin it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's a terrible gentilic. Ge demonim. Yeah, demonim. Uh, oh, yeah, and Christy Mullin was saying Wisconsin it. Oh, that's terrible. I grew up in Milwa Mi Milwaukee. Oh, Jesus, no, that's terrible. Oh, no, Wisconsinite? Because they were saying it, the I is long. Oh, okay, yes. Wisconsinite. Oh, okay. That's that's worse, but Wisconsinite. Yeah, no, that's terrible. I mean, Wisconsinian was bad enough. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, but uh, Wisconsinite. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's not good. No, it's not that bad. No, no, not good, not bad. Mm. Elijah Kelly was saying gorgeous drawing, and Elijah was saying, "Oh wow, that's so cool, Roslyn." Seeing the richness of the detail in person must be so wonderful. What? So what I want Rosalind... to see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Danny, so Rosalind was... No, up... no, the thing is that I always... If I see a comment of a user, I try to see all the comments they say. So Because maybe they're saying hi and then they ask a question. Uh-huh. So I just like try to look for all the conversations. So Rosalind was saying, I viewed The Jewish Bride by Rembrandt oh. last week. Gorgeous. And ended up standing in front of the painting for at least 30 minutes. Oh, my God. I thought Christ. I knew the piece pretty well, done studies of it, but mind blown. Yeah, Always that more to learn. That sleeve yeah. is... I mean, the portraits are gorgeous. I think his portrait is... is I like his portrait more than hers. Mm -hmm. Um, The sleeve is like every... like. Every century of painting. And have you seen it? In oh, person? I went to, yeah, I went to Amsterdam. When I went to Amsterdam, I stayed there for like maybe nine days, something like that. Um, and I think I went to the Rijks Museum. Um, I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I paid for that museum. I don't know how many times. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember I, I had to go back because... It was kind of crowded when I went to see the Night Watch, and it was my first time looking at the Night Watch. And I was kind of, like, frustrated. And then I I guess you go to the other rooms where they have the Rembrandts, and there's, like, um, when I went there, I think the 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 windows that they have in those um, rooms, mm -hmm. th they are kind of frosted, I guess, but the light still hits the paintings quite a bit, and it glares like mm -hmm. crazy. So they're very difficult. So I was always super frustrated that I couldn't get to, you know, look at them properly. That I was like, no, I'm coming back. And then I was like, no, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. But the um, Jewish Bride, which is probably, I mean, it's super easy to say. Rembrandt's best painting is Night Watch, for sure. Um, but a lot of people, I would say, maybe put you know this as, as a, a the, the second best painting would put would say Jewish bride and um and it's a tremendous painting it is just it is it's a gorgeous gorgeous painting um but that sleeve is is everything that sleeve is like classical painting and it's like the most contemporary of paintings it's um it's hard to decipher how in the 17th century somebody would paint something like that. Like, it makes no sense. I mean, it was this is post old um, Titian, so maybe there is some some similitude between um, like the older Titian and and those 
very direct approaches of Rembrandt. But still, I mean, still, it's it's so out of time, ahead of time, you know, doesn't belong to time. Th those sort of efforts in painting are just too crazy. But So I think th those are probably some of the two, I mean, you you would have to argue not to put them in the top five paintings of Rembrandt, yeah. Jewish Bride and, and Night Watch. And the anatomy lesson, too. Yeah, that's very, that's because you famous, were saying what would people say. would say that yeah are... I think that's a famous painting I wouldn't say that's the best painting. no but that's I would say that painting. if you ask someone oh, yeah tell yeah. me a painting that Rembrandt did yeah they would go with the night watch oh or for sure with the yeah. anatomy lesson one. yeah um night watch deserves it is it my favorite painting no I've said this so if you go to London National Gallery don't throw uh, your Campbell soup to the, uh, this painting but uh Hendrik bathing in the river for me is like hmm. it's like if Rembrandt became like a little jewel that you want to carry with you like for the rest of your life that's the painting like that is the painting uh regarding the uh Wisconsin Gentilic uh Gentilic yeah Hector was saying the other option is Cheesehead Cheesehead well yeah <laughs> I could deal with that I mean I may have like I love cheese. I freaking adore cheese. Yeah. Um, so maybe that is the little bit of uh, Wisconsin, a little bit of Madison that I carry with me. Well, I don't carry any Madison in me. And I love cheese. So. Okay. Ruin my Gentilic <laughs> story. Uh, Steve Wheat was saying, I struggle with thick shadows, not, but not highlights. Paint wise. Why? You struggle with shadows, but not lights. Um, shadows require like, um, um, I would say like a softer hand. I mean, I'm generalizing because that's, you know, it's very abstract to speak about them like that. But you need a soft touch to do shadows. Shadows, because our brain, our brain is kind of dumb. Our brain thinks that light is this and it equates shadow. So this is light. Right? It equates it with this. But it equates shadow. It equates shadow with dark. Like our brain is stupid. It's very binary. So it immediately associates shadow and dark, which is not true, not necessarily true. Like obviously there are conditions where shadow is super dark. Like think of... Uh, you know, the darkest of darks in a um, in a Caravaggio, right? So any Caravaggisti painting, any, you know, um, contrasty chiaroscuro painting, of course, light, dark, right? And you could say light shadow equals light, dark. But there are paintings where your dark, where your shadow is around here. And that's where you have to, Tell your stupid brain, not your stupid brain, our stupid brain, that shadow does not equate to dark. It does not. Sometimes you have values that are right in the middle of your scale, or even like sometimes they go towards the lighter part of your scale, that play the role of shadow, you know? It, because lighting conditions are as varied as any other, you know, condition in this universe. So it's not as easy to say light equals light, light equals white, and, you know, shadow equals black. That's terrible. So, yeah, so shadow requires us to be a little more sensitive, I feel. Carla Anglada was saying uh, that they're silly afraid to try plein air. And Cody was saying, Carla, the worst thing that can happen is you make a bad painting. Might as well give it a try. Yes. Or maybe the worst thing would be getting sting, stung <laughs> by a bee while making a bad painting and then it starts raining. Haha. <laughs> maybe you're right to fe fear plein air. What was that, Cody? <laughs> There's a story there, I feel. <laughs> I love that they were like, you can't do it. And then they were like, you know, it could be like you know actually Stay fatal. Inside. Yeah, yeah. Stay yeah. inside. Stay safe. <laughs> Um, uh, let's see. Mm. 
Felipe Neves dice hola. Hola, Felipe. Oli Lawson was saying love the drawing, Nicolás. Oli. The planner tip about not chasing ephemeral part is so useful. Thank you. Hey, Oli. Big hug. Mm. Steve Weed was saying, can you talk about your feelings on Rockwell and Wyeth? Saw Rockwell Jesus. work recently in every bit art, not just illustration. Oh, Thank you on the light and dark explanation. Oh, they're both incredible. I mean, I, I adore illustration. I adore like golden age illustration. So very hard for me not to speak about them in the same, with the same tone, you know, with the same reverence, I would speak about Rembrandt. I think they're as big as any of these artists that we consider old masters. Um, Wyeth is just tremendous. Like the joy in, in, in that kind of fabled storytelling, you know, because, because Wyeth feels different than Rockwell. They, they're very, very different painters, but there's something that there's something about Wyeth's like simplicity and storytelling that feels I don't know. Like Rockwell was never about this this um it wasn't necessarily about let me let me see if I could do this. So first of all, they are up there. Pantheon of painters. Period. So we're not even going to question those things. And after this um after this we can stop Daniel mm -hmm. Lira. But so they're they're both top 1 for me. So, you know, let's not put that any of this into question. But when trying, because I, I don't think I've ever tried to like um, put into words this, but you know, when I've seen, like I, I saw, I went to Brandywine and I went to Stockbridge, so both museums. And when you see Wyeth, and, and what's beautiful about Wyeth is that you also see the Wyeths, you know, uh, the, these three incredible painters and how, you know, some of that DNA just passes on to them. There is like... Um, I don't know. There's like a, like a bigger sense of like storytelling, like a broader sense of storytelling in the Wyeth, like in the Wyeth DNA, I feel. And it does come from NC. And that's why he could, you know, he could, he could tell those stories and they feel kind of timeless. If I, if I, if I would have to say something is that there is a bigger sense of timelessness to, um, to Wyeth. So if anyone's looking at Treasure Island, like there's still something like if somebody today were to look at Treasure Island, you could still feel like, wow, you know, your your imagination is just blown away. Like your brain just starts loving all these images. Of course, you would love a Sargent image, but uh, a Rockwell image. I'm sorry. But Rockwell was so tied to Americana, I feel. You know, his job was to do propaganda, like the the best version of propaganda, but still very much so propaganda. Like he was, you know, it, it was war, it was post-war, and he was just, hey, these are America's values. Like that's what Rockwell's job was to say, you know, America is like in this incredible country. These, This is what makes America amazing. This is what makes the United States incredible. These are our values. Like we're going to uphold our values and we're going to speak about who we are as people through, you know, the, these paintings, because think about it, like Line Decker would do a, um, a post cover and Rockwell would do a post cover, but they felt different. They felt a little bit different. Like Rockwell was a hundred percent. Like he's probably Rockwell has to be one of the most quintessential American painters ever, you know, alongside with Hopper. Uh, I don't know. People would say Pollock, but I don't know how you get America from just paint splatter. But um, but Warhol or Rauschenberg, like you could tie those together, right? You could say Rockwell, Hopper, um, Rauschenberg, Warhol. Like, you know, th that's a that's a DNA. That's America's DNA that you can sense that there's a country underneath there. Um, but I, I think they were different. They feel different. So I have a stronger pull, I feel, if I have to. I have a stronger pull towards Wyeth. I don't know how to explain it. I think Rockwell was, like, leagues better than, you know, as a painter. I mean, 
Rockwell could paint circles around almost every single illustrator. Well, probably Leindecker was was the most talented, but Rockwell could probably paint circles around N.C. Wyeth. I mean, technically, he was so much better than Wyeth for sure. But I don't know. There's something about Wyeth that is just kind of like the magic of illustration. I think Rockwell was just like, it's so in your face and it's so kind of plausible and real and the characters are real that it just feels like life. It just feels like, yes, those are my neighbors. Like that's what gossip looks like. You know, when, when you look at these um, gossip, the, the painting of gossip of Rockwell, or when you look at the day of the little girl or the day of the little boy, you're like, yeah, that's what my day felt like. But I think with Wyeth, you would get not just your brain saying, yes, that's, that's life. That's my everyday life. Like I can recognize my culture, my neighborhood, my family here. Wyeth was like, here is, I'm going to feed your brain and your brain is just going to like explode. And there was something about the openness of his images that allowed him to do that. It just, I think that that's the magic of illustration. I think that the best of illustration does that. Now, does that mean that he's a better illustrator than Rockwell? No, of course not. They're, again, these are both giants. They're, they're, it's impossible to say, you know, one is better than the other. But it's, it's um, I guess it's about what you get from them. Again, like, like I said, Rockwell, a thousand times a better painter. Like, I've seen paintings of Rockwell that are, I'm like, oh my God. Like, as a painter, it's like, not only what he's saying, like, it's enchanting and it's it's just these you know, such good vibes with his paintings. But but how he painted some of these things is like, Jesus Christ, like there's such a masterful painter underneath, you know, those those images that you sometimes don't pay attention to how masterful they are because you're thinking about the image. But um but I think in a far more basic manner, because he was a like a super basic painter. There there's like paintings that I think Rockwell, because he was so grounded in many ways, he could have never painted the things that that NC uh, painted, like that um, that um, that carriage robbery. I think, you know, that horse carriage robbery. Oh my God! Like the angles of that image are just so freaking incredible. The shapes of that image is just so so good. So because he was a little more detached and because he was just so inclined to feed your imagination, he could give himself liberties that maybe Rockwell, as talented as he was, he couldn't. You know, Rockwell was about life. He he started from life. He could he had to start from reference, from his, you know, the people in 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 his town were his models. So he had to always ground it in something because his objective was to show you not possible worlds but like the best of what your reality was it's like this is the country that you envision that's what he was showing you um but i think wyeth was like this is your this is what you can imagine this is the, these are the worlds that you can imagine so they don't have to exist in front of you this is like what you know what can be out there so i don't know very different but incredible absolutely incredible they they are two of my heroes um you know i'll never tire of of looking at um at a wyeth or at a at any wyeth to be honest or at a rockwell painting or a line decker painting or a cornwell painting or a meat shafer painting yeah they're all incredible so anyways daniel era yeah so that was it um, for today yes i think so it's it's uh, late i have to do some errands yes. um we're gonna leave this here i'm probably gonna apply a couple of layers of um transparent acrylic binder mm -hmm. uh and then we're gonna do we're gonna slightly redraw and some i'm seeing some things with the eyes but we're gonna shift it just a tiny bit mm -hmm. um and uh and then we're gonna do underpainting and we're gonna paint it and hopefully it'll be like a strong portrait, strong moment here. Yes. Favorite moment of this is um, skin sort of bunching up a little bit because your hand is pressing mm -hmm. against it. And just these these shapes of the shapes of the, of the hand are just uh, 
absolutely gorgeous. I can do a better job at painting them. Mm-hmm. Right now, I was, I was, I think I was too caught up. Now, this is the thing. This is a large head. We were, we were talking with Danny, and this is, yeah, maybe it is like a, like a, let me look at, let me look at you. Give me a second. It is Sli- real size. Slightly smaller, I would say. But like tiny bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I came up to the face just to see <laughs> if I could see you. And just slightly, slightly smaller so, than life size. Uh, measure it with your, with your hand. I, I think it's too big. Yeah. Good. I don't know if I could do chin to your... Good. Okay, I can't move. Oh, no, it's kind of like life size. It yeah. is. Yeah. I told you. It's so, life size. Yeah. So that's Danny. Yeah. That's uh, Stephanie. Um, <laughs> um, but it's just, it's too hard for me to see it. Yeah. Ideally, course, you would have arms straight, you know, piece of charcoal or something softer to just to block this in and just to gauge relationships. But because I'm so close, because it's like... What if we try like a, for the no, underpainting no, no, to no, no, no. No, don't worry have a it. different setup? So no, no, can... no. But now, now that it's down here, now that it's here, I can make adjustments. Like now that it's... It's done. Okay. I can actually shift little things um, as I'm painting. So. Okay. Um, but for example, I was looking at the screen because I have no idea if this arm is too long. Like no idea. It's just it's a mystery to well, me. Well, I I just because in the lower part I see your I was seeing your head. Yeah, but this is like I don't know how I think, long that is. I think I also have like a weird like perception of it right yeah. now i don't see it long i i hope it's not that I, long i think i have to see the original one and you have to like step back to see it yes so yeah but uh that was it yes uh, so we're done i I could do this very quickly so yeah, but, but, thank but, you guys but, but, um what's that i okay. was gonna say that i'm gonna uh share for yeah. the last time yeah the picture of chili oh, okay so while we dog. look at lady bean um, so you can maybe yeah. subscribe when you uh, for Chile. Yeah, I don't know. For the... Uh, I don't know how exciting people are going to be about watching a dog grow up through paint. But uh, that's probably going to be a lot of uh, oh, what that I excites paint, me a lot. Uh, next year. So, you know, if you're into that sort of stuff, great. If you're not, I don't know what to tell you. There's going to be a lot of dog uh, in painting. Anyways... Yeah. Um, uh, thank you. If this is your first time, uh, hanging out with us, thank you. Uh, we try to do live videos every day. We try to start paintings either every day or carry on with a painting, uh, for, um, a week, I would say, uh, last, last painting we, we did over a couple of sessions with, it was a, a nice homage that, uh, we wanted to do to, uh, Kim Jung Gi. Uh, that painting is simple. Um, but I think it's very heartfelt. It's done. Uh, that painting is up for sale if you are interested, but it's one of those sales that is like, um, I mean, I put a price on it. It's high, but I think of myself as like the uh, legal guardian of that painting. So, you know, I'll hold on to that painting for as long as, you know, I have to. Uh, but if somebody out there feels that they can, you know, treasure it, as much as we do, then I think that's also fair. Cause I got some messages of people saying, Oh, keep that. You can't sell that. And I do understand people that say those things. Trust me. Like I have sold paintings that I did of my dad who passed. I have done paintings. I've, you know, I've, I've sold and I've had to let go and say goodbye to paintings that I love of my mother, of Danny, of my children. Trust me. Like, there's a sense of strange, it's a weird way of defining loss, but it's always weird when you let go of something that you treasure and you cherish. But, and I know a lot of people would be like, so keep them. And I get it. But here's the thing, like part of also being an artist and having, deciding to make a living off of what you do, it kind of means that you're going to have to say goodbye to the things that you like. You know, there there is like an inherent sacrifice to saying, I'm going to paint something and I'm going to probably say goodbye to it. And if mm-hmm. I want to make a living, it's OK to say goodbye to those things. It I, I don't want to minimize it. It's always tough. It's always, always going to be tough, always. But there is something beautiful when you do that enough. 
when you've painted enough and you've been lucky enough to to have people support you and to you know love paintings or treasure paintings and then suddenly come to terms with them and and say no it's okay if i just say goodbye to this work that teaches you a lot it teaches you a lot and it also teaches you to be very grateful when people support you and people and you start to understand you know what i this means a lot to me, but this may mean also a lot to the person that wants mm -hmm. to pay for it and wants to have it, you know, and wants to live alongside it. Yes. And you can't deny other people that. You can't tell them, no, it's my painting and I am the one who feels the most for this painting. You don't know that about how other people, uh, you know, a painting can can spur feelings in somebody else that you don't understand, that you don't have to understand. So even though it's tough, I've always been, you know, always, always been of the mindset that even the tougher paintings, the paintings that have to do with your loved ones, with your family, with the people that you respect, if you want to keep them, fine. But if you're a paint, but there's also like, you know, for us, for example, I, my life I, has kind of transformed into very intimist painting and I paint what surrounds me and I paint the people that I love and the spaces that I inhabit and so there's always going to be a sense of closeness so there would always be a reason for me to not want to let go of anything always I mean if I start thinking about it there's so many paintings that we've done even just only in the our painted lives you know in the past almost three years now mm -hmm. that I would have been like are you crazy? I'm not going to say goodbye to this. Like, mm. no. But if I think that way, I'm just going to start treasuring and treasuring and oh, treasuring them, yeah. a lot of it. And I'm always going to find or I'm always going to make excuses for myself to keep things and to treasure them and to say, no, this one. I can't let go of this one for this reason and this one for this reason. And I do often think that letting go of something that you love and something that you put a lot of your heart into is a nice way of slowly becoming okay with the fact that things, you know, things are only supposed to be here for a little bit. Here meaning our company or here meaning this world. Like painting also has a way of teaching you that it's okay to say goodbye. And and it's great if you do something that you loved and that you want to be, you know, paid fairly for it and that at some point, somebody says, I enjoy this as much as you do, and it means as much for me as it is as it means for you, and I will gladly pay for it. That is very nice. That's a very nice feeling. It doesn't validate anything, but it's really, really nice when you feel that. Yeah. So it is sort of a symbolic price, but it's not really like I have to also honor all my work. And, you know, I've... I've I've uh, worked at painting for a long time and I've sold paintings for many, many years. So it's not a, it's not something that, you know, kind of shocks me or surprises me, mm -hmm. but it's a, my way of saying it's a, my way I turned into Mario there, <laughs> but it's my way of saying um, <laughs> that I want to keep this painting for like a little bit. And if there's somebody out there that likes it, like what happened with the, um, the sunflower painting, yes. we had to say goodbye to it. And yeah. It, I don't I didn't like saying goodbye to that painting. That's not cool. That was I thought I could hold on to it for a, a lot longer. And you know, this uh, uh fellow painter who's super talented and and super successful, he he wrote to me. He's like I want that painting. That's mm -hmm. it. Like I just want that painting. And I was like, sure. And it off went to Rome and to to Italy and I'm sure it's going to be at a great great home. Yes. So um, so it is there, and by saying there, it's um, our storefront, which is our webpage, which is same um, same as our channel. So it's ourpaintedlives.com yeah, if you want to check those out. Pinned in the comments. Thank you, Danny. As a link, so you can go so and you check can, it out. You can check our webpage out. Um, that's the only way we are supported. So we don't have a patron. We don't have a subscription based, you know. Uh, fee for um for our YouTube channel. We do everything available free for uh, whomever you know deems it um valuable. Mm -hmm. Um, so what keeps it what keeps us uh, being able to offer these sort of things is uh, generous people that support us by buying our paintings. Yes. So um you can check those out at our uh, storefront, 
And for everyone else, if you're hanging here for the first time, um, yeah, we're going to be here tomorrow. Um, don't know which time. So in order to be informed about the times, because they are varied and variable, um, subscribe yeah. and ring the bell. And you'll get a notification of when we're live. And subscribe so, for Chile. And if yeah, you want to see. Do it, you know. For Chile. We're going to have to change the do it for Fer, the 100K subscribers. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it's either that or I have to paint like Mr. Beast and hope that he, uh, you know, um, just pushes our channel in some way. <laughs> And then we oh we painted can go from, lives that we can that's go yeah open to we can go from thirty thousand to like three million in like uh, an afternoon. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? How somebody like like him would be like, hey, follow these people. Yeah, and it's like bloom. And it's like you know five hundred thousand people are suddenly following yeah. you. Crazy. Um, yeah, that would, that's the power of those. You know, he's a cool guy. He's like a really nice, cool guy. Um, anyways. Um, but yeah, so we've had to, um, give up on, on Fer's dream of, of having like a hundred K plate, little YouTube plaque. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's never going to happen, but, uh, we can, we can try to, um, to, um, do it for Chile to force you into watching this. If you like dogs. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see a puppy grow into a bigger puppy. Uh, through painting, then hang out with us uh, next yeah. year. Yeah, and yeah, uh, maybe some cameos when we have her with yeah. us. So yeah. win win. I Chewing mean, doing some cat red. Why no, never. Uh, why wouldn't you subscribe? So <laughs> why wouldn't you? Thank you, everyone, for Chili, joining us. The short lived. No, Nicola. We're never gonna let her chew on cat red. No, never. never. No, not even a joke. Never. No. Although if she does, I can make like a mean like Joker painting of her. Like, you know, mm. some mm, green hair, dye, dye mm, a little bit of her mm. hair green. She has long hair, supposedly. Mm. You know, red mouth. Mm. She's going to be foaming at that moment. So crazy no, painting. No, don't say that. So no, thank you everyone not. for joining no, us. No, Chili. No. And no, Chili. I am Stay so off excited. And uh, we'll Here's see you. Here's some lead white. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Uh, bye. Thank you bye. so much. Bye. And yeah, bye. You can say that's bye. That's it.